It's time for Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Welcome in, everybody, for a surprise start of this game. Uh, we were scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. tonight, a game one of a three-game set with Northern Colorado. However, we have decided to play two today due to weather conditions that we're expecting tomorrow that's supposed to rain all day and be very cold. So we'll have a doubleheader this Friday afternoon, and the first game will start should start any time now. We're just about ready to go. The second game will start at 6 p.m. UVU coming in off a win against in-state rival Utah. They have a two-game win streak, and this is an important series for UVU as they face Northern Colorado. The Bears are in the cellar right now in the Western Athletic Conference, so these are games UVU needs to win to stay in the race, whether it's for a WAC regular season championship or just to get into the WAC tournament down in Mesa, Arizona in late May. These are games the Wolverines have to take advantage of. So we'll take a quick break here on WolverineGreen.com. We'll come back with the national anthem after this. Shane Company has hundreds more engagement rings than any other jeweler in town. If you're looking for a platinum ring, our selection is huge in both traditional styles and fashion-forward looks. Our buyers collaborate with top designers in the U.S. and around the world to create unique platinum engagement ring styles exclusively for Shane Company. Like all of our engagement rings, you can customize your platinum ring with the diamond or ruby or sapphire of your choice. Some jewelers in town don't even carry platinum engagement rings, and the ones that do have only a few mass-produced styles. Go to Shanko.com or come to our store for a superior selection, the best value, and the hottest looking styles. Now you have a friend in the diamond business, Shane Company, at the corner of State Street and 7200 South. Open weekdays till 8, Saturday till 5, close Sundays. Online at shaneco.com. <laughs> I apologize, we came in a little late there into the Star Spangled Banner. However, a lovely performance from Utah Valley's own volleyball player, Jeremy Barney, performing here at Brent Brown Ballpark, and we are just about set for baseball. So, game one of a doubleheader here this afternoon in WAC conference play. Around the diamond for UVU, it will be Seth Rainier catching today. Riley White at first. Grayson Bogdan at second. Cam Zollinger at short. Zach Slesk getting the start at third base. Sean Boish in left field. Jordy Hart in center. And Craig Brinkerhoff getting the start in right field. Pretty much the way it is for the Wolverines defensively usually. However, Danny Bettis getting the Friday first game start rather than Andrew Frader. The coaching staff at Utah Valley just made the changes because Danny Bettis has been pitching so well lately. In Danny Bettis' last outing, it was in Sacramento State. He went a complete game, no run, shutout of the Hornets, giving up only four hits in that ball game. So Dan Danny Bettis will try to continue that momentum or continue that trend I should say here against the Bears. The Bears starting lineup and batting order Landon Mosley will lead things off batting first and playing second base. Ryan Yamane will play shortstop bat second. 
Jensen Park will play, play in center field and bat third. Batting cleanup, it'll be Ben Netzel. He will play in right. Nick Miller, the first baseman, will bat fifth. Brandon Vaughn will bat sixth and will be the designated hitter. Ryan Tibbetts will be behind the plate and batting seventh. Nick Tanner batting eighth, playing left field. And Corey Fujimoto batting ninth and playing third base. So we are just about ready to get underway here at Brent Brown Ballpark. An overcast day, but the weather is nice right now. No wind to speak of. First pitch from Danny Bettis is a strike right there, 0-1. Game time, first pitch, 3.05 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Game time temperature, 63 degrees. No balls, one strike to Mosley. Fastball, down and away. It's 1-1. One one. Your umpires today, it'll be Kendall Snyder behind home plate, Barry Larson at first base, and Mike Witte at third. Mosley batting from the right side, open stance, one one swung on and fouled off to the right field, fouled off down the right field line, and the count's one and two. Mosley this season batting only 195. He's had only 82 at bats, four RBIs for the second baseman. The Bears have struggled mightily this season. However, they did pick up a game against Grand Canyon this past weekend down in Phoenix. One two pitch. There's a slider that's down in the dirt, and it's 2-2. Two and two. The Bears, their record, 6-34, and 1-14 and in conference play. So it's been a brutal season for UNC. 2-2 two, two the count, the pitch. Down in the dirt again. Nice stop by Rainier, who has nobody on. And the count is full. Landon Mosley having a nice at bat here to lead the game off. No score, just getting underway here in Orem. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the first. The pitch down in the dirt, and Bettis walked him. So Danny Bettis, not a great start. Puts the leadoff hitter on. And Rainier will head out to the mound and have a very quick word with him as the left-handed hitting Ryan Yamane will come to the plate. Yamane hitting 212, six RBIs for him. No homers. Mosley with a good sized lead at first, held on by White. Mosley has stolen a bag and been caught once this season, playing in on the edge of the grass at third base, expecting the bunt to Zach Celeste. Fastball in there at the knees and it's one strike to Ryan Yamane very few fans on hand here as of right now we found out that we'd be playing this ball game at three in the afternoon just early this morning the coaches decided on it after taking a peek at the forecast for tomorrow there's a line drive just over the dugout and off the rail railing of the UVU off the top of the UVU dugout there. So watch out. There's a couple of fans sitting behind the dugout. And that, that'll get dangerous. They don't have any time to react to that. Late on a fastball was Yamane. The count 0 and 2. Bettis from the stretch. Checks the runner. Now comes home. That one swung on. Lifted foul off to the left. Onto the rooftop. And the count remains. No balls. Two strikes. Jensen Park, the center fielder, waits on deck. Everybody just about straight away for UVU. The outfield playing unusually shallow. Hart in center playing a shade to the left. Big gap in right center field as Bettis checks on the runner throwing over. Huge gap in right center field, I should say, as playing straight away in right field is Craig Brinkerhoff and then hard in left center as the ball misses up high. It's one and two. So should the left-handed hitting Yamane get a hold of one to right center field, it could roll a long ways. Of course, Jordy Hart has so much speed out there in center field. We saw him made, make a just 
superb play against the Utes. Runner takes off. Now he's going to head back to first, throw down a second, throw to first. They got him. So I don't know what happened there. Mosley took off for second base, saw that he was going to be thrown out, stopped in the middle between the base paths and was just caught up. So he's retired, and there's one away. Base is empty, one down. Two balls, two strikes, the count to Yamane. So a mental error or maybe a broken hit and run by the Bears. 2-2. Breaking ball misses high and away. There's that changeup from Bettis. And it's 3-2. and two. So Danny has gone full count to each of the first two hitters he's faced. Infield playing back now with nobody on the base paths. From the windup, Bettis exhales. Now he throws. 3-2 is swung on and popped into shallow left field. Going back is Zollinger to his right, makes the grab, and there are two away. That ball jammed Ryan Yamane, and he popped it up the other way. Two down now for Jetson Park. Mentioned that the Bears came into this ball game with a 6-34 and record. UVU comes in with a 16-22 and overall record. They are 8-7. and in whack play. Here's the right-handed hitting Park. First pitch to him, fastball grounded to third, softly fielding it as less, taking his time, a skip to first, and he got him. He threw it a little wide of Riley White, but White backhanded it easily out of the air, and the inning is over. So the Bears go down quietly after, after Mosley, the leadoff hitter, reaches base. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We will head to the top of this, or rather, excuse me, the bottom of the first inning here in Orem. Bears nothing. Wolverines coming up. 14 in progress. 10-4, we're on the scene. Son, there's no grilling permitted on this beach. Whoa, I didn't make this. It's supposed to be this fresh grilled chicken burrito. Do I look like a rent cop Well. When I see layers of freshly grilled chicken, cilantro lime rice, and a warm handcrafted tortilla, I know they must have been grilled on my beach. But you smell that, rookie? Roasted green chili sauce? You making signature sauce on my beach? No. Rookie, you buying this? Captain, I bought last time. Taste summer. Escape to Costa Vida. Congratulations, Wolverines, on your inaugural season in the WAC. Let's celebrate at the Fairfield Inn by Marriott Provo Orem in their newly remodeled rooms, lobby, and gym, plus their friendly staff and the fastest internet in Utah Valley. The Fairfield Inn by Marriott Hotels are number one in the world in customer satisfaction, and they're the best value in the Valley, with a great rate of $79 per room per night for faculty, staff, and students. Restrictions may apply. Call today for details and to reserve your room. 801-377-9500. Jordan Bianucci back here on WolverineGreen.com as we head to the bottom of the first. No score. The Utah Valley batting order is as follows. Jordy Hart will lead things off. Seth Rainier in the two spot. Sean Boish will bat third. Bart Kruger batting fourth. Craig Brinkerhoff will bat, or excuse me, Bart Kruger will bat cleanup. Riley White will bat fifth. Brinkerhoff in the sixth spot. Grayson Bogdan seventh. Zach Slesk eighth. And Cam Zollinger batting ninth. First pitch in there for a strike to Jordy Hart, hitting from the right side. Against the right hand hander on the mound, Chris Hammer for Northern Colorado. 0 1. Fastball, and it hit him. So a fastball hits Jordy Hart, and it, I don't think it got a real good piece of him. Maybe part of his jersey on the inside near the yeah, waist. Right. Couldn't Number tell, six, but. Seven. Kendall Snyder awards him first base. And that's interesting because Jordy didn't really try to get out of the way of that ball. And you'll see sometimes the umpires will be strict with that. We'll say, well, you didn't try to. The rule is you have to make an attempt to get out of the way. Jordy did not, but he is awarded first base. It was a fastball. He didn't have much time to get out of the way. Playing in at third is Fujimoto. Here's Seth Rainier, the pitch. Jordy takes off. Hit and run is fouled the pitch down the left field line and it's 0-1 so the Wolverines being very aggressive right right out of the bat here in the bottom of the first Chris Hammer right into the stretch as Seth Rainier looks into the dugout for the sign. Hammer this season a 4-5-2 earned run average he's 2-7 win loss this is his 11th game starting pitched 67 and two thirds innings already throw over to first Jordy back in safely 
He has struck out 53 batters and walked 21. Hitters are hitting 293. So Chris Hammer's kind of been all over the place, it looks like, but definitely has strikeout stuff. 0-1 pitch. Rainier takes a tra- changeup up high, and it's 1-1. One and one. Hammer will come with an upper 80s. Will maybe hit 90 at times with the fastball. No curveball, really, for Hammer, though he throws a nice slider and a split change. He comes set at the belt, showing bunt, na- bat- bunt now, I beg your pardon, is right near. He pulls it back as a fastball misses outside, and it's 2-1 and one to him. Around the diamond for Northern Colorado, behind home plate, catching Hammer, it's Ryan Tibbetts. Nick Miller at first, London Mosley at second base. Ryan Yamane at shortstop. Corey Fujimoto as a throw over to first base. Shorty back and diving safely. Fujimoto getting the start at third. Nick Tanner in left. Jensen Park in center field. And Ben Netzel getting the start in right. Outfield shallow left fielder Tanner deep. There's a slider that misses down and away, and it's 3-1 and one to Rainier. Tanner playing just about 10 feet in front of the warning track in left field. Everybody out else. Center fielder Park and the right fielder Netzel, very shallow. Corners in on the infield, holding on Jordy at first is Nick Miller. Jordy takes off again. This one hits Rainier, and Rainier turned away from it and hit him in the left shoulder. So Chris Hammer's having a very tough time right now locating pitches. Two hit batsmen to begin the ball game. So Hart, who is taking off on the play, no steal as it hit Rainier. Two men on now for Sean Moish. Moish, the left-handed hitter, or rather the switch hitter, I beg your pardon, hitting from the left side against the right-handed hammer. Moish this season, a 284 hitter, sitting 343 with runners in scoring position, however. Wide open stance from the left side. Hammer throws. Fastball swung in and hit well to right. Going back is Netzel. Netzel now looking up at the wall. It's off the wall. And it caroms past Netzel. Now he'll pick it up. One run will come in to score. Rainier heading for third. The throw is cut off. And the Wolverines lead one to nothing off, off a single that was just almost maybe four or five feet. And it would have been a home run. Boish had to stop at first base as it was hit so hard that he didn't have time to head for second. First to third went Seth Rainier. Scoring was Jordy Hart, so the Wolverines, a good start here, taking advantage of the two hit batsmen. And here comes the pitching coach for Northern Colorado. It's R.D. Spies. He'll have a meeting with the entire infield. So Sean Moish smashed one there to right field. At first it looked, the way the right fielder Ben Netzel was playing, it looked like it was going to be gone. It bounced, or rather hit, off the Utah community sign just to the right of the scoreboard out there in right field. And then it caromed a few feet past Netzel toward the infield, so he couldn't get to it quickly. But Moish held to a single. That was like a David Ortiz-type single where you almost hit it out of the ballpark, yet he couldn't get to second base. It was hit so hard. Moish, not a real speedy runner. However, the main reason I think he couldn't get a double out of it was just because it reached the wall so quickly. That ball was smashed. Here comes Kruger with men on the corners and nobody out. So Moish picks up. It's 24th RBI for the season. First pitch, that looks like a curveball, but the scouting report does not say he has a curveball. Anyway, great breaking ball in for a strike on the outside corner to, to Kruger. Kruger hitting 283, 30, 351 with runners in scoring position. Right near at third, Moish at first, and now stepping off the mound is Hammer, and the way he did it, it almost looked like a balk, but he got that right foot off the rubber first, and then looked back the runners one strike the count to Kruger pitch to the big lefty swing and a miss on a slider and it's 0-2 the Wolverines would love to get a couple runs here in the first they already have one for Danny Bettis who's the starting pitcher today for Utah Valley 
Hammer from the stretch. Throws. 0-2. Oh, swung on. Chopped to second. This could be two. Playing it on the hop is Mosley. Goes to second. On to first. Safe at first base. And the runner comes in to score. So Kruger beats out the chopper to second base. And it's 2 to nothing. Wolverines. A fielder's choice. 4-6. Kruger at first base with the RBI. So Mark does the job. That ball just hit slowly enough to stay out of the double play. With nobody out, the double play, if completed, would have scored a run anyway. Kruger, of course, wouldn't have been awarded with an RBI. Here's Riley White, the pitch. Fastball, just missing down low at 86, and it's 1-0. Playing in on the grass at third base is Corey Fujimoto. Holding Kruger on at first is Miller. Kruger, good-sized lead. The pitch, swinging and a miss from... Riley White, and I think that was the split changeup that dove at the last minute toward the shoe tops, but over the plate from Riley, and he went chasing. One ball, one strike, the count to him. Kruger, this season, two for three in stolen base attempts. He goes, the pitch, swung on, grounded to second, slowly grounded to second. Gobbling it up as Mosley throws to first for the 4-3 put out. Kruger advances to second. The hit and run works there for the Wolverines in the sense that it keeps them out of the double play. So a runner in scoring position now for Craig Brinkerhoff. So a nice job by Riley White. He really just kind of rolled over on that. It looked like a off-speed pitch, but did his job. Hit it just slow enough where it was not a double. Well, it couldn't have been a double place. Kruger was taking off on the pitch. Slider misses down low to Brinkerhoff. It's 1-0. 2 to nothing. Wolverines leading. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Two men out with Kruger at second base. Brinkerhoff, the right-handed hitter, bent at the knees. Now Hammer looks back at second. The pitch. That one goes all the way to the backstop over the glove in the head of Ryan Tibbetts. Heading to third is Kruger. And that'll be a wild pitch. So Hammer having a tough go of it here in the bottom of the first inning. Two balls, no strikes, the count to Brinkerhoff. The pitch to him. Ooh, a fastball just missing outside. Pretty good pitch there from Chris Hammer. Not getting the call, though from the home plate umpire, Kendall Snyder. 3-0, missed, down and away. So Bringeroff takes four balls, straight balls, and he will head to first base. And here's Grayson Bogdan. Number one, Grayson Bogdan. So now Bogdan with runners on the corners and two outs. Try and pick up a base hit and an RBI. The Wolverines lead two to nothing on one hit. Two men on, two men out here in the bottom of the first inning. Game one of a doubleheader between Northern Colorado and Utah Valley. Pitch to Bogdan. Slider down, and it's 1-0 and to Bogdan. So the fifth straight ball that Hammer's thrown from the stretch, resting that glove on his left leg, standing upright. Now comes set at the belt. He throws. Fastball up and away, an easy take. And it's 2-0. Should Bogdan reach, it would be Zach Slesk, the eighth place hitter, to hit. Bringer off at first, Kruger at third, the pitch to Bogdan. There's a fastball right down the middle. 2-1, that's a get-me-over fastball. Bogdan taking all the way there. Two balls, one strike the count. Bogdan... Has one foot out of the box, peering into the dugout, getting a sign. Short lead at first from Bringeroff, held on by Miller. We'll see if he takes off. He does not. The pitch, pretty slider, fell in there for a strike, and it's two and two. That slider, really a, a sweeping slider, kind of a frisbee type slider almost. Not a not a hard cutter by any means. Two balls, two strikes, two men on, two out, two to nothing. Wolverines lead in the first. The pitch, runner takes off from first, ball misses away. So, Bringerhoff needlessly slides into second base. No throw, of course, coming, but now another run, runner in scoring position for Bogdan.
3-2 pitch. Swung on it. Hit well to left. Going back is Tanner. Tanner at the wall. Looking up. It's gone. A home run for Grayson Bogdan. Bogdan did not miss that one. A ball up in the zone, and he crushed it. It went over the Costa Vida sign out there in left field. Tanner could do nothing but look up and see it disappear over the wall, and it is five to nothing, Wolverines. So get hot, Grayson Bogdan. Number two, Zach A three-run shot with two outs and two strikes on the Wolverine second baseman. First pitch to Slesk with the bases empty is a fastball up high. Five to nothing. Five runs here in the first inning for the Wolverines. When's the last time you saw that? One ball, no strikes. Hammer from the windup, he throws. There's a slider in there for a strike, and it's one ball, one strike to Slesk. For Grayson Bogdan, that is his third home run of the season, his 17th RBI. 1-1 one, one pitch, a little check swing foul that will roll toward the Wolverine third base dugout. It's one ball, two strikes to the Wolverine third baseman. So the wind, which was such a huge factor against Utah on Tuesday, not so much here today as that ball, another check swing, just fouled down the first baseline. So Slesk is just trying to stay alive against these breaking balls. He's looks like he's being fooled. However, he's battling and fouling them now. Yeah, fouling them off. Bent into the knees. The right-handed hitter takes a fastball outside, and it's two and two. Two-two pitch. Fastball down just below the knees walking off the man mound heading for the dugout was hammer he thought it was strike three now the count full to zach slesk the eighth man to hit in this first inning the pitch swing and a miss he got him on a fastball low and away so slesk strikes out to end the inning however the wolverines get five runs on two hits including a big blast from grayson bogdan over the left field wall Wolverines lead 5 to nothing as we head to the top of the second here on WolverineGreen.com. Congratulations, Wolverines, on your inaugural season in the WAC. Let's celebrate at the Fairfield Inn by Marriott Provo Orem in their newly remodeled rooms, lobby, and gym, plus their friendly staff and the fastest internet in Utah Valley. The Fairfield Inn by Marriott Hotels are number one in the world in customer satisfaction, and they're the best value in the Valley, with a great rate of $79 per room per night for faculty, staff, and students. Restrictions may apply. Call today for details and to reserve your room. 801-377-9500. Captain Sorensen here for the guaranteed best meatballs anywhere. Firehouse Subs Meatball Sub. King of the meatballs, that's for sure. Without equal. Well, technically, the Firehouse Meatball does have an equal. The Firehouse Meatball Sub you eat today is just as amazing as the one you'll eat next week and every week after that. So basically, they're co-rulers. Is that what you're saying? I'll put it this way. Nothing compares. And no wonder. Firehouse Meatballs are specially blended with premium ground beef and pork, aged Parmesan cheese, toasted breadcrumbs, and Italian spices. And the crown? Our zesty marinara plus melty Wisconsin provolone. And the throne, please? Our perfectly toasted private recipe sub rolls. It's the classic Firehouse Meatball Sub. Guaranteed to be the best meatballs you've had anywhere. Try it today only at Firehouse Subs. Take one bite. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and FirehouseSubs.com. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. First pitch fastball from Danny Bettis is a strike. Swing and a miss from Ben Netzel, the left-handed hitter. 0-1. There's a breaking ball that misses down low. Count even at 1-1. One one. So the Wolverines, after a five-run first, lead it 5 to nothing. We're in the top of the second inning. Northern Colorado, Utah Valley here at Brent Brown Ballpark. Bettis from the windup. He throws 1-1, one, one, check swing. They want to appeal down to third base. He did not go around, says Mike Witte down there at the third base line, and it's 2-1. and one. Ben Netzel this season, 252, hitting 19 runs batted in, leads the ball club, and three home runs. 
2-1 pitch to him. Fastball swing and a miss at 89 miles an hour. Ben Netzel was behind the heater. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the second. Two balls, two strikes to Netzel, the right or right fielder for UNC. 2-2 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. And what a strikeout from Danny Bettis. His first of the day, Netzel. Swung and missed at a 91-mile-an-hour fastball. And Danny Bettis just blew him away with that one. Here comes Nick Miller. Bettis will touch the rosin bag and then head back to the rubber. Working from the just about the middle of the pitcher's plate on the mound as a fastball misses down and in at 90 to the left-handed hitting Miller. Miller hitting 268 this season. No home runs, 16 runs batted in. Bent at the knees, wide open stance. The pitch. Whoa, line drive off the mound. Cam Zollinger can't handle it behind second base, and it's into center field for a single. That ball was scorched, and Danny Bettis kind of jumped out of the way to his left, or to our left, I should say, to the left side, stuck his glove out over the mound just to see if he could snag it. He couldn't do it. So a single and the first hit of the ball game for the Bears off the bat of Nick Miller. Zollinger did well to range to his left. He got in front of it, but he couldn't uh, couldn't corral that baseball. So Miller on first with one out for Brandon Vaughn. Vaughn, a right-handed hitter. Bettis back into the stretch. The pitch. Fastball. Down in the dirt. Missed. And I say a fastball. That was a slider that missed. And it's 1-0 and to Brandon Vaughn. Vaughn hitting 282. Hitting 293 with runners on base. Miller at first with a short lead held on by Riley White. The pitch, a pretty curveball from Danny Bettis. That one just falls in there softly for strike one. One ball, one strike, the count to Brandon Vaughn. Miller at first, one out here, top of the second, five to nothing, Wolverines. Fastball misses away, two and one. Miller has stolen two bags this season on three attempts. Two one pitch coming to Vaughn. Swing and a miss. And it's two and two. I neglected to mention Danny Bettis' statistics coming into this ball game. He has a 3-4-9 earned run average. He's three and three this season. Pick, picked up that third win in Sacramento this past weekend. This is his 11th game starting. He's pitched 56 and two-thirds innings, walked 31, and struck out 20. 2-2 two, two pitch. Fastball low and away. And it's three and two now to Brandon Vaughn. Northern Colorado trying to get a rally going as the Wolverines put a five spot up in the first. Following Vaughn, or follow, following Vaughn is Tibbetts on deck. Bettis comes set at the waist. Checks the runner. Runner takes off. No, he bluffed and a ball missed down low. A fastball. About the ankle, about ankle high to Vaughn. So a single and now a walk after. An impressive performance to the first hitter. Danny Bettis struck Netzel out. But now two men on and only a man out for Tibbetts. Tibbetts only hitting 246 this season. He struck out 12 times. One home run. Only 10 RBIs. Outfield playing shallow for the Wolverines. Corners playing about even with the bags. Fastball right there on the outside corner, and it's strike one. Tibbetts, the left-handed hitting catcher for Northern Colorado. Zollinger playing behind the runner at second. That's the shortstop. Wolverines looking for a double play here. 0-1 pitch. Swung on and lifted foul and out of play off to the left side. And it's no balls, two strikes. So now Bettis in an 
advantageous, advantageous situation here. He can, doesn't have to throw a strike to Tibbetts. Can, can throw that slider, perhaps, or the changeup out of the strike zone, trying to get Tibbetts to chase. O2 pitch coming, two men on, a man out. Here in the top of the second inning. O2 swung on, line foul, left field line onto the berm, and one lucky fan out there is gonna collect quite a few foul balls today. Maybe only, and I think I could count them, maybe 30 people here, maybe, at the ballpark, as this game was not scheduled to be played at this time. It was scheduled to be played at 6 p.m. However, because of weather tomorrow, the coaches decided this morning to play a doubleheader today. There's a base hit into right field, a little looping liner coming into field. It is Moish. Holding up at third base is Miller, and the bases are going to be loaded with one out for Nick Tanner. So Ryan Tibbetts just pulled a little looping liner through the right side to the right of to the, I should say left, I keep saying right-hand side to Riley White at first base, but to the left of Riley White. So a single, a walk, and now another single, and the bases are loaded. A man out in the inning. Corners playing even with the bags. Second baseman, shortstop, Bogdan and Zollinger, double play depth. The pitch, that one swung on and hit high into right center field. Ranging over his heart. We'll see if he tags. He does. Now he bluffs. The ball's cut off by Riley White. And so a, gr a good throw from Jordy Hart. It was not on line, however, to come to the plate. So I take that back. It wasn't a terrific throw by any means. But a nice job by Riley White to cut it off behind the pitcher's mound. And no damage done. So a quick pop-up from Nick Tanner. And it's up to Fujimoto to drive in the runners. The Bears didn't need a hit to score there. They couldn't get a run, though. Now the base is juiced, two outs. Fujimoto, the nine-place hitter, batting from the right side. From the windup, the pitch from Bettis. Strike one on the outside corner, a 91-mile-an-hour fastball. Fujimoto batting 205. No home runs, four RBIs. Bent at the knees, the pitch, fastball up high, 92 miles an hour, and it's one and one. Danny Bettis coming with some high velocity stuff this afternoon. Wolverines lead five to nothing here in the second. Bases loaded, two out for the Bears. The pitch, that one swung on, ground ball, ranging to third base is, is Sless, throws to second, the easy put out, and he just got it. Sliding in there was Tibbetts, and Celeste, who dove for that ball, made a nice play on it. It was slowly hit into the hole, and Celeste makes a nice play to end the inning, and the Bears leave the bases loaded. So, Bettis gets out of a jam. The Wolverines lead 5 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the second inning here on WolverineGreen.com. Utah Valley 5, Northern Colorado, nothing. Captain Sorensen here for the guaranteed best meatballs anywhere. Firehouse Subs Meatball Sub. King of the meatballs, that's for sure. Without equal. Well, technically, the Firehouse Meatball does have an equal. The Firehouse Meatball Sub you eat today is just as amazing as the one you'll eat next week and every week after that. So basically, they're cold rulers. that what you're saying? I'll put it this way. Nothing compares. And no wonder Firehouse Meatballs are specially blended with premium ground beef and pork, aged Parmesan cheese, toasted breadcrumbs, and Italian spices. And the crown? Our zesty marinara plus melty Wisconsin provolone. And the throne, please? Our perfectly toasted private recipe sub rolls. It's the classic Firehouse Meatball Sub. Guaranteed to be the best meatballs you've had anywhere. Try it today, only at Firehouse Subs. Take one bite. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. Look for us on Facebook, Twitter, and FirehouseSubs.com. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Is gravity weighing you down? It's time to escape. Get air hang time in Aura, the largest trampoline park in the country. Get vert with 3D dodgeball. Catch huge air into the foam pits. There's plenty of room to go big in our massive open arena. 
play above the rim in the slam ball courts, or take a pizza break, enjoy the arcade, and win fun prizes. Get air hang time in Orem, the ultimate trampoline park, just south of UVU across from Walmart. Bottom of the second inning. Wolverines lead it 5 to nothing as Cam Zollinger leads things off for UVU. Takes a first pitch strike. That one swung on and missed. Breaking ball at 77, and Zollinger looked bad chasing that one. Cam Zollinger, the shortstop, hitting from the right side. 0-2. Breaking ball missed away. 1-2 and two now. Chris Hammer, the man, back out on the mound for the Bears. He had a rough first inning, giving up five runs on two hits. The pitch. Swung on, hard ground ball to shortstop, though. He gobbles it up. Yamane throws to first for the out. That ball sounded like it was hit hard right off the bat. However, it was hit off the end of the bat, and Zollinger is retired. So one out in the second. Here comes Jordy Hart. Hart led off the ball game. He was hit by a pitch, and so was Seth Reinier. So a good start to the second for Hammer. From the windup, he throws. Swung on ground ball, base hit down the third base line. That one was hit hard. Coming over to cut it off on the track is Tanner, heading to second easily in there standing up is the speedy Hart with the one out double. So, Jordy Hart and the Wolverines are hitting the ball very well right now. Hart scorched that one down the line to the right of the third baseman, Fujimoto. That ball was hit very well. Rolled all the way almost to the wall near the 305 marker where it was cut off by Tanner in left. So here's Rainier with a man in scoring position and only one down. Rainier, as I mentioned, was hit by a pitch in the first inning. He came around to score the pitch. Slider in there for a strike, going one. We haven't seen a lot of fastballs from Hammer. The scouting report on him describes fastballs in the upper 80s. We haven't seen much of that. And a slider in the mid-70s. We've seen a few of those and a changeup. They say the changeup, it's a kind of a split change. 0-1 pitch, and it hit him. That was, I believe, a, maybe a split change at 75. It certainly wasn't a slider. That hit right here, it looked like in the maybe the leg, but that ball, I mean, that ball was so slowly, or just, I mean, so slowly thrown that Rainier kind of just let it hit him. And so the umpire, Kendall Snyder, really letting hitters just take take one. Same thing happened to Hart in the first inning where he got hit, but that was a fastball. Didn't really have a chance to get out of the way. Here's Moish, who had an RBI single last inning. Two men on the pitch. That one swung on, grounded to first, and it gets through the hole into right. Jordy's going to round third base, head for home. Fielding it in right is Netzel. He'll go into second base, the cutoff man. Hart will score. Heading in, heading first to third is Ryanier. Deja vu all over again for the Bears, and it's 6 to nothing, Wolverines. So Sean Moish, not a well-hit ball, just a ground ball to the left of the diving Nick Miller at first base. Couldn't come up with it. It rolls into the outfield. Another RBI for Sean Moish. Here's Kruger. Kruger picked up an RBI on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Right near at first. Moish at first. The pitch. Pitch. That's a lot of shuz to pronounce. Fastball taken for a strike. It's 0-1 to Kruger. Fastball swung on, grounded to second. This could be two. Mosley on to Yamane. Throw to first. Easy double play, and the inning is over. So the Wolverines do get one run on one hit. However, they strand a runner after grounding into an inning-ending double play. We head to the top of the third here in Orem. Wolverine six, Bears nothing. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Is gravity weighing you down? It's time to escape. Get air hang time in Aura, the largest trampoline park in the country. Get vert with 3D dodgeball. Catch huge air into the foam pits. There's plenty of room to go big in our massive open arena. Play above the rim in the slam ball courts. Or take a pizza break, enjoy the arcade, and win fun prizes. Get air hang time in Aura, the ultimate trampoline park. Just south of UVU across from Walmart. 
Game management is brought to you by the Les Olson Company. The difference between success and failure can come down to game management. Partner with the pros at Les Olson Company. Manage all of your document needs. Managing the flow of information is vital to the success of any business. Les Olson Company provides its partners with a full range of document management solutions backed by a veteran team of professionals. More than paper and ink, more than hardware and technology, this is a partnership. Visit us online at lesolson.com. Les Olson Company, your business empowered. We head to the top of the third inning here in Orem. The Wolverines leading six to nothing. The offense has come alive this Friday afternoon. Danny Bettis back out on the mound for the Wolverines. Bettis hasn't been perfect by any means. He's allowed four base runners in two innings, but no runs. He was able to strand three runners on the base paths the last inning. That one swung on, hit the right field. Shallow right coming in is Brinkerhoff to make the grab. And there's quickly one away. One pitch, one away. Off the bat, I didn't even get a t- chance to say, off the bat of Landon, Landon Mosley, the true leadoff man. So that ball, the wind, we don't have a flag out in right center field for some reason today. I'm not sure if the someone was busy with finals and just didn't get get out to putting out the flag or what what the problem problem is looking around it the wind must be blowing in there just a breeze because everyone's playing very shallow for the most part in the outfield first pitch there's a slider or, or i should say a curveball from bettis and it's 0 and one to the left-handed hitting yamane yamane popped up in the first inning one strike pitch Swung on, chopper back to the mound. Running over to the first base and underhanding it to Riley White is Bettis, and there's quickly two away. So this is exactly what Danny Bettis needs, just a quick inning. Now batting, number 15, Jensen Park. So with two away and the base is empty, here comes Jensen Park. Park grounded out to Slesk at third, back in the first. We're in the third inning, six to nothing. The Wolverines leading the Northern Colorado Bears. No men on, two men out. The pitch to the right-handed hitting Park is low and away. A fastball missing at 90. One ball to count to him. The Wolverines in their home white uniforms with the green lettering across the chest. Fastball up and in. It's two and zero. Oh. The green Wolverine script across the front of the uniform outlined in just a thin line of black. The green caps and white trousers. Fastball down and and away, and now it's 3-0. So Bettis will see this from him, where he'll look so good to begin the inning and then kind of lose command. 3-0 pitch to Park. Taking all the way is Park. It's a fastball on the outside corner, strike one. The Bears in the home gray, or rather the away grays, I should say. The blue lettering across the chest. Fastball up and in. A four-pitch walk from Danny Bettis. Now he has to face the cleanup hitter, Ben Netzel. Now batting number 11, Ben Netzel. So Netzel, who struck out in the first inning, will come to hit here with a man on first base. The Bears need base runners. They don't have to pick up all the all six runs here as Bettis quickly throws over to first just to keep Park close over there. The Bears don't have to pick up all the runs here. They just need a couple to stay in this ball game. Short lead at first. Riley White holding his man on. That one swung on and missed, and a balk has been called. So that pitch will not count, heading to second base as Bettis kind of throws his head up at, in frustration. And I didn't see the ball. I beg your pardon, the balk. He must have flinched or never come set. I I would bet that he never came set. So, Park at second base now. Runner in scoring position. The first pitch coming to Netzel. Fastball right there. No balls, one strike. First base umpire called that balk, I believe, on 
Bettis. 0-1 pitch. Curveball stays up way high, and it's 1-1. Watching, I was watching the Rockies-Giants game just on Wednesday afternoon, and one of the, I believe it was Wednesday afternoon, one of the umpires, uh, I can't remember his last name, but his first name was Bob, and he's known for calling box on pitchers, and so his nickname around the majors is Bach and Bob. So Barry Larson, who called that Bach, we can call him Bach and Barry. Bach and Barry just calling another Bach there. Unbelievable. One two pitches or one one pitch is swung on and missed. A fastball on the outside corner, and it's one and two. Netzel, the right hitter, trying to drive in a run for the Bears here. They trail six to nothing. Everybody straight away for the Wolverines defensively. The pitch. Strike three called a curveball, and it was a beauty. It froze Netzel. Second strike out of the ball game for Danny Bettis. The Bears, no hits. They leave a runner stranded, no runs. We head to the bottom of the second, six to nothing Wolverines. It's Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Richmond is brought to you by the Les Olson Company. The difference between success and failure can come down to game management. Partner with the pros at Les Olson Company to manage all of your document needs. Managing the flow of information is vital to the success of any business. Les Olson Company provides its partners with a full range of document management solutions backed by a veteran team of professionals. More than paper and ink, more than hardware and technology, this is a partnership. Visit us online at lesolson.com. Les Olson Company, your business empowered. Dude, who was that cute girl I saw you talking to in the hall today? Oh, Sarah, she's cute, right? I met her at a pool party at my apartment complex. I've seen her at a couple activities, and I've been meaning to ask her out. Dude, I need to meet more girls. Be cool, man. Here she comes. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Cole. See you at the volleyball court tonight? You know it. Bro, I love my life. Call today to be part of the pack, 801-431-0000, or visit wolverinecrossing.com. First pitch to Riley White to begin the bottom of the third is a fastball high and away. There's a fastball that catches the outside corner, and it's one and one to the switch hitting Riley White, who is getting the start at first base today and has all season pretty much. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one swung on and hit the center field, but right at the center fielder, Park. He takes a couple steps back and makes the grab. So, Riley White is retired on three pitches. And there's one away for Craig Brinkerhoff. Brinkerhoff, back in the first inning, walked and came around to score. That was a, that was a part of a five-run first, including a three-run homer off the bat of Grayson Bogdan. First pitch, Brinkerhoff grounds one to short. Charging is Yamane, I beg your pardon. Throws him out. A nice play there from Yamane. And quickly two away here in the third. Just a slow roller to shortstop. And Yamane's been good at short from what we've seen, making some nice defensive plays over there. Here's Bogdan. Has a couple more fans file in here. Still very, very few on hand for this first game of a doubleheader. The first pitch to Bogdan down in the dirt. It's 1-0. and oh. I mentioned Bogdan got a pitch up in the zone, and he didn't miss it in the first inning. A three-run, two-out homer over the left field wall. The pitch to the right-handed hitter. That one just catches the outside corner, belt high, and it's 1-1. One and one. That was the slider from Chris Hammer. Bogdan hitting 254. Out of Bluffdell, Utah, went to Riverton High School. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on, popped up. This is going to stay in play in foul territory. The first baseman will come over and make the grab. Nick Miller. Easy inning for Chris Hammer. A quick inning, and that's exactly what he needed. The Bears will need base runners and runs, however, coming up as we begin the fourth. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. The Wolverines lead this one 6 to nothing. Dave, a UVU student majoring in digital media, did you know that by ordering UVU license plates, you contribute to the General Scholarship Fund and help students, like myself, afford tuition and other college expenses? In addition, you have the added benefit of showing off your UVU pride while driving around the valley. The cost is a one-time $15 fee for your new Wolverine plate, plus your annual $25 scholarship donation. 
Pride your ride. Order your UVU license plates online at uvualumni.org. Hungry on campus? How many times have you found yourself fighting for parking when you get back from lunch? Dining Services provides a large variety of food and menu options here on UVU's main campus. They are from Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Rock and Robbie's, Campus Cafes, to an on-campus cafeteria that offers home-style cooking. Their prices are more than competitive, and their quality is second to none with any off-campus food eatery. Plus, eating on campus leaves your car in the primo parking spot. Visit our Facebook page at UVU Dining Services or an on-campus dining location to see for yourself. It will be Nick Miller, Brandon Vaughn, and Ryan Tibbetts. Five, six, seven for the Bears here in the top of the fourth inning. The Bears trail six to nothing to the Wolverines in game one of a doubleheader. Game one of a three-game set here, Norm, on a overcast afternoon. Danny Bettis winds, he throws, fastball, missed somewhere. That looked pretty good to me. It was right there on the outside corner, just about belt, belt high, but Kendall Snyder called it a ball, and it's 1-0. The 1-0 pitch. Slider misses down and away, and it's 2-0. Miller singled and reached third in the second inning. In that second inning, the Bears stranded three runners. The bases were loaded, and they could not get a man home. Wide open stance for Miller. Pitch to him is swung on and popped foul. Will it get out of play? I believe it will. It will onto the berm, giving chase was the third baseman Slesk, but he ran out of room in the UVU bullpen down the left field line. And I mentioned that fan earlier on the berm. Tally it up. That's another foul ball for him. Two balls, one strike the count to Miller. Base is empty. Top of the fourth inning. Nobody out. Playing well off the bag at third base is Sless. The pitch, that one swung on, fouled away again, left side out of play. The count's two and two. Slesk is playing 20, 25 feet off the third base bag. The, sh this is, the shift is really on right now for Nick Miller as the shortstop Zollinger plays just to the left of the second base bag. Bogdan pulled all the way over to the right, way next to the third base bag, and now a line drive that found a way through the shift, just to the left and to the right of Riley White. Fielding it is Brinkerhoff at right. He throws to first base. Moish fields it on a hop in there with a single, though, is Nick Miller. So the Wolverines did everything they could there to play Nick Miller and where he normally pulls the baseball, but somehow Nick Miller found a very small hole in between Bogdan and Riley White on the right side of the infield. So, leadoff man on here in the fourth, fourth for the Bears. Here's Ryan Tibbetts. Tibbetts singled back in the second. He's one for one. Hitting from the right side. Vaughn, or excuse me, Miller at first base. I beg your pardon as the ball misses down low. It is Miller at first base. Now Vaughn hitting at the plate with nobody out. Vaughn, the designated hitter who's at the plate, he walked in his first at bat. Now a throw over to first base. Miller back in diving. From the stretch, Bettis throws. Down in the dirt, 2-0. and We're in the fourth inning, and Bettis has yet to have an, an inning where he has not had to go to the stretch. He's allowed a base runner in every inning. Even in the first, when Mosley was caught stealing, technically... The Bears went down one, two, three, but Bettis allowed a base runner. The pitch, fastball down in the dirt, and now Bettis is having a real hard time finding the strike zone. It's 3-0. and oh. Bettis, usually the Sunday starter for the Wolverines. Here comes Dave Carter to have a word with him out on the mound. But, and right near, that, right near it was trotting back to home plate and was about to, in all that gear after he'd been out to the mound and had a word with Bet as he got about to the plate and saw Dave coming out of the dugout and <laughs> Miller, or excuse me, Rainier's body language was just, are you kidding me, Dave? I just talked to him. You're going to make me run out to the mound again? This is absurd. <laughs> that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> so Dave having a little chat here with Bettis. Make sure everybody's on the same page. 
Maybe that's just funny to me. It's it's not as funny when you don't have a partner in the booth and you're laughing at your same jokes. It's your own jokes, I should say. It's actually it's actually kind of pathetic. Where's James? Where's Ryan? Where's Nick? It's just me here. One man on the base paths for the Bears. The pitch. Wow. There's a fastball that looked to be right at the knees on the outside corner. Called for a ball by Kendall Snyder. A 3-0 pitch that missed somewhere. And I couldn't tell you where that one missed. Maybe a little low. Maybe maybe just a hair below the knees, but we've seen that pitch called a strike today. But no matter, the Bears now threatening. Two on, runners on first and second, nobody out. Here is Brand, here is Tibbetts, the pitch. Outside that's called for a strike. I'm baffled. That was a fastball that was low and away. And Snyder calls it for the calls it for a strike. So Bettis, maybe a maybe a makeup call. I have no idea what that was. If you're watching on the video, maybe you, you disagree, but that one looked outside to me. 0 1 pitch swung off, fouled back to the screen, and it's 0 and 2. So a nice job from Danny to get ahead of Tibbetts. Tibbetts singled back in the second inning. He was erased on the base paths, a 5 4 fielder's choice to end the second. That was the inning. The Bears left the bases loaded. We're in the fourth here, 6 to nothing, Wolverines. Open stance from the left side for Tibbetts. Pitch to him. Strike three call on the outside corner. A fastball that froze Tibbetts. Three strikes. He's gone. And Snyder really taking his time, the home plate umpire, bringing up Tibbetts. So the third strikeout of the ball game for Bettis. His second looking. And it's a big one. One out now with runners on first and second. And here is Nick Tanner. Tanner popped up to the center fielder in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. The pitch to the left-handed hitter is a fastball that misses way up high. Coming out of his crouch to make the grab was Seth Reinier. Bettis, the sophomore, out of Highland, Utah, went to American Fork High School. Six foot five, 230 pounds. 1-0 pitch. Fastball. Missed down and in. 2-0. pitch. Fastball way outside and Bettis again very inconsistent right now. That pitch was well into the left-handed hitter's box, left-handed batter's box I should say. The count, 3-0. Miller at second base, Brandon Vaughn at first. One out, the pitch. Fastball, strike one on the inside corner and it's 3-1. So, Bettis trying to battle back here. Celeste about even with the bag at third base, about 15 feet away from it. Outfield playing shallow. Riley White playing behind the runner at first base as this fastball is fouled off behind us and out of the park. And as I say that, it caroms back off the net and into the playing area behind home plate. So, the count full. Bettis... Tinkers with the rosin bag. Plays with the bill of his hat. Now he's ready to go. The right-hander from the stretch. Checks the runner at second. Now comes set at his waist. The pitch. Fastball well outside. And now the bases are loaded once again. So Bettis, after battling back, cannot get the out. So here comes Fujimoto who grounded into a 5-4 fielder's choice. It was a nice play from Zach Slesk diving to his left back in the second inning and getting his man just barely at second. That was with the bases loaded and two outs, so Fujimoto looking to redeem himself here in the fourth. Six to nothing, Wolverines. Bases loaded, one out for the Bears. Breaking ball, a curveball that is down in the dirt, and Rainier blocked it, and it's 1-0. and 
So now we're going to have Patrick Wolf get ready in the pen for the Wolverines. As Charles working the camera over there has my back. Thank you, Charles. One-zero pitch, fastball inside two and zero. So, even though the Wolverines lead six to nothing, a extra base hit here could clear the bases, and the Bears would be right back in this ball game. Bettis, the two-zero pitch, and Mike. My goodness, where did that pitch miss? That was a ball in the outside corner. That ball looked to be a strike on the outside corner, and it was called a ball. I, the strike zone's all over the place right now. 3 0s down low. That's certainly a ball, and he walked a runner in. So I think Bettis is a little ticked off as he kicks the dirt off the skirt of the mound, the front of the pitcher's mound. I think Bettis is a little hot out there with home plate umpire, home plate umpire, beg your pardon, Kendall Snyder. That that a uh, 2-1 pitch or 2-0 pitch, I should say, was absolutely, in my opinion, a strike. It was a fastball right there, knee high on the outside corner, and it's been called a strike today. That's what's frustrating, is that's really a strike no matter what. But today, the strike zone from Snyder is. Just been all over the place. You don't know what he's going to call. Base is loaded, though. Six to one. Wolverines leading the pitch. Fastball. There's a strike on the inside corner, and it's 0-1. Base is loaded. One out in the inning. The Wolverines lead six to one. We're in the top of the fourth. Danny Bettis, the Utah County kid, the sophomore, trying to get out of another jam. Mosley takes a breaking ball down low, and it's one and one. A nice take there from London Mo Landon Mosley. Landon Mosley, one over one with a walk back in the first inning. Mosley, the true leadoff hitter for the Bears. So Fujimoto, walking with the bases loaded, does pick up an RBI. One one pitch coming, and there's a pretty breaking ball that just missed. I. Has to be up high and maybe as it broke off the plate away, but a pretty good pitch there from Bettis. Two and one. Base is loaded. Nowhere to put Landon Mosley. And Bettis certainly doesn't want to go three balls, one strike to him. Two and one, the count now. Defensively, the Wolverines straight away. Brinkerhoff and right playing shallow. The pitch, that one swung on a chopper up the middle. This could be two. Bocked into second, throws to first. Double play! And Bettis limits the damage. Bases loaded and one out. And the Bears can only get one. So, a chopper, a unassisted double play for Grayson Bogdan. The, the Bears, I beg your pardon, get two. One run on one hit. We head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Wolverine 6, Bears 1. Campus, how many times have you found yourself fighting for parking when you get back from lunch? Dining Services provides a large variety of food and menu options here on UVU's main campus. They are from Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Rock and Robbie's, Campus Cafes, to an on-campus cafeteria that offers home-style cooking. Their prices are more than competitive, and their quality is second to none with any off-campus food eatery. Plus, eating on campus leaves your car in the primo parking spot. Visit our Facebook page at UVU Dining Services or an on-campus dining location to see for yourself. Bottom of the fourth inning here in Orem. Zach Celeste to lead things off. It'll be eight, nine, and one. Zach Celeste, Cam Zollinger, and Jordy Hart. Six to one, Wolverines lead. First pitch from Hammer is swung on and hit high, but in the ballpark in the left field. Tanner will move to his right, settle under it, make the one-handed grab, and on one pitch, Celeste is retired. He's 0 for 2 today. That'll bring up Zollinger. Cam Zollinger. 
Zollinger grounded out to the shortstop back in the second inning. Fastball misses away, and it's one ball, no strikes to Cam Zollinger. Cam, of course, the little brother of Court Zollinger, the former Utah Valley catcher. 1-0 pitch to Cam. There's a breaking ball that falls in there for a strike, and I don't care what the scouting report says. That's a curveball. That, that is not a, that is the craziest slider, the slowest craziest slider I've ever seen. 2-1 is a fastball missing down low, and it's 2-1. and one. Wolverine 6 on four hits. Bears 1 on three hits. Bottom of the fourth. Base is empty. One out. 2-1 pitch. Fastball misses up high and glances off the glove toward the backstop off of Tibbetts, the catcher, and it's 3-1 to Zollinger. Zollinger, the past few ball games, has kind of... Has come alive from the plate. Had a couple of good base hits in Sacramento State, a couple of RBIs. 3-1 pitch, fastball, strike, taking all the way with Zollinger, and the count is full. Zollinger was one for four against the Utes on Tuesday in that win as he takes the ball here and a one-out walk issued by Chris Hammer. And Hammer has to beat himself up after that one. He walked the nine-place hitter. And now here comes Jordy Hart, who doubled down the left field line back in the second inning and came around to score. He was hit by a pitch and came around to score in the first. Waiting on deck is the catcher, Seth Reinier. Zollinger with good speed at first, held on by Nick Miller. Back to the stretch for Hammer. First pitch, fastball, low to Hart. So good speed all around right now. Hart, terrific speed at the plate. Zollinger, good speed at first. Jordy Hart, if you can believe it or not, was a football player back in high school. Has a throw over to first. He went to, he's from Westlake, or he went to Westlake High School, I should say, his junior and senior year. His freshman year, he went to Juan Diego, played baseball and football for the private Catholic school in Draper is a ball rather a strike pardon me, a fastball catches the outside corner, it's one and one, played football there and baseball as well, after that season he actually transferred to Lehigh which was at the time in his boundaries Westlake High School had not yet been built at Lehigh he played some running back 1-1 one, one pitch to Jordy, shows Bunny, he bunts it down to the third base line, charging is Fujimoto, he's going to let it roll let it roll, let it roll, it just goes foul about three feet in front of the third base bag. A heck of a bun from Jordy Hart. That was almost a nightmare for the Bears, but it just rolls foul over that chalk line, or I should say spray paint line. Chalk line, that sounds much more romantic than the spray paint foul line. But Hart, the count one and two on him. So Hart went to Lehigh and played football for Lehigh, and he tore... He had a terrible injury with his right knee. 1-2 pitch. Swung on, fouled back to the screen. He tore, and I have to, I wrote this down. I was talking to him. He tore his ACL, his MCL, his PCL, a meniscus problem in his right knee, and his LCL on a on one play in Lehigh in practice. Another throw over to first from Hammer back in is... Zollinger, Wolverine six, Bears one, one out here with a man on in the bottom of the fourth. So right then and there, Jordy decided football's not for me as he fouls another one back. A good at bat here from Jordy Hart, battling. And I appreciate it as he allows me to continue to give some background info on him. But he went to Lehigh High School, his boundary school before Westlake was open, and for those these the remarkable part according to Jordy he got he had the surgery for all those and was back and almost just about at full speed three months after the surgery which I told him I have a hard time believing that as a fastball misses up high it's two and two those knee injuries you I mean it could be a year until they recover possibly at, at least six or seven months with all those injuries but Jordy said he went to rehab twice a day every day and it healed up. 2-2 two, two pitch. Check swing. Did he go around? An appeal down to first. He did. Strikeout. 
First base umpire Barry Larson rings up Jordy Hart. He is retired. A fast high, fast, or I should say a hard high fastball that Jordy Hart up around the up around his helmet that he just couldn't lay off for some reason. And there's two away for Seth Rainier. Just to finish the thought on Hart, he played in one practice for for Lehigh as he tried to, as a breaking ball, falls in there for a strike to Seth Rainier. It's on one. Played in one practice in his, I believe it was his junior year at Lehigh. The coaches really wanted to come out. He played running back. Played in one practice. He sprained his ankle and said, that was it. I'm done. <laughs> and what's amazing about that story is just to see Jordy Hart now, the incredible speed he has. Pop up, foul, first base side coming over, backhanding it in foul territory as the first baseman Nick Miller and the Wolverines are retired. So UBU gets a base runner. However, they leave him stranded. No runs, no hits. We head to the top of the fifth inning here in Orem. Six to one, Wolverines. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Hey, UBU fans, what would you say if I told you you could stay in one of Utah Valley's pristine hotels for free? Well, guess what? You can. By signing up for La Quinta Returns, you can earn free nights at La Quinta. Stop by one of our many locations or visit us at LQ.com. That's LQ.com. Be a true UVU fan and stay at La Quinta Inn and Suites in Orem. Sorry to interrupt you, you are listening, but we have a deal for you. It's clearance time at Murdoch Hyundai. Right now, you can get the brand new 2013 Elantra for only $119 a month, or the brand new 2013 Sonata for only $150 a month, plus 0% financing for up to five years, and no payments for 90 days. All with our exclusive No Regrets Promise, volume pricing, worry-free warranty, and a five-day money-back guarantee. You've got to come and see us in Logan, Lyndon, Murray, and online at MurdochHyundai.com. If you're... New pitcher on for the Wolverines. It is Patrick Wolf to begin the fifth inning. He will face Ryan Yamane, Jensen Park, and Ben Nessel. Wolf has been a very reliable freshman reliever for the Wolverines. So Bettis is done for the day. He goes four innings and gives up one run on three hits. However, he threw a lot of pitches. So Park, the left-handed pitcher on the mound, will face the left-handed hitter, Ryan Yamane. Wolf working straight from the stretch with the bases empty. Six to one, Wolverines lead, top of the fifth. From the, from the stretch, as I mentioned, he comes set below the waist. Wolf throws, fastball, right there on the outside corner. Strike one at 84. Wolf looks like he, I mean, just puts everything into that fastball, falling off towards the left side of the mound as a lefty falling towards third base. 0-1-1 to Yamane, who's 0-2. Pitch to him. Fastball. That one swung on. Looping liner into center field. It's going to hop in front of Jordy Hart and it gets by him over his head. Heading into second base as Hart chases after it. He has it. But in there at second base with a leadoff single and an error will be Yamane. So that one took a wicked bounce above the head of Jordy Hart, who's not all that tall to begin with. Below 5'10". Has to be about 5'7". And Hart, I don't know, that is just a crazy hop. It looked like just it was a little looper lining into looper or a looping liner into center field. Hart came in to play it on one bounce, and then it was like it hit a trampoline and went over his head and kept rolling. Hart so luckily Hart was speedy because backing him up the left fielder, Boish wasn't quite over there yet. And Jordy Hart with the quickness was able to get the ball and hold the runner to second base rather than getting to third. So a single and an error, the first error on the day for the Wolverines. And that one's it's kind of hard to blame Hart. That one just took a wicked hop. There's a strike on the outside corner, and it's 0-1 to Jensen Park. Park has walked and bounced out to third base. 
Man in scoring position. No outs for the Bears. The pitch. Fastball way high. And it's one and one. Wolf on the season. A 3 3 8 earned average. He's 0 1 win loss. This is his 13th appearance. 18 and two thirds innings pitched. He's walked eight, struck out six. Opponents are only hitting 200 against the lefty from Reno. 1 1 on the way. Breaking ball misses way high and outside, and it's two and one. Rainier will trot out and have a word with Pat. So after the error, Yamane stands on second base. A hit and an error on that play. Bogdan playing close to second, holding the man on. When the pitch is thrown, now he'll retreat back to his normal position. The pitch, that one swung on, chopper back to the mound. Backhanded by Wolf. He'll go to first for the easy out. The runner will stay put at second, but what a play for Patrick Wolf. I just mentioned how when he throws that ball, his no, momentum guys, carries him to the left bad. side, that third base bad. side of the mound. So Wolf had to reach back across his body to stab that baseball, and he made a terrific play on it. That ball was hit so, so slowly, I don't think anyone would have been able to get it, the middle infielders, I mean, and throw out Park. So Wolf helps himself out there with a superb defensive play. Here's, here is Ben Netzel. Netzel has struck out twice today. Left-handed hitter, straight up. Fastball, high and away. One out, a man on second base for the Bears. They trail 6-1. to one. We're in the top of the fifth inning here at Brent Brown Ballpark. Playing deep in left field is Moish. Everybody else about middle deep. Lefty on lefty matchup. Now Wolf steps off the rubber and looks. Yamane back to second. The Bears scored one in the fourth. They trail by five. Now a bunt popped up and out of play into the seats on the first base side. That's the kind of foul ball, if you're a fan, you want to see. Just a weak pop-up. Earlier in the ball game, the left-handed hitter, and I can't remember quite who it was. It may have been y Yamane, or Park. it could have been Park, lined one over the UVU dugout, and luckily it hit the railing that separates the fans from that top of the dugout there. That, that railing, not placed in all ballparks, and that railing saved him. Somebody, well, some trouble. 1-1 one, one pitch coming from Wolf. Fastball swung on, getting jammed and fouling it off toward the on-deck circle on the third base side. Netzel couldn't get around on it, and it's 1-2. and two. A hard fastball in on the hands from Wolf. Patrick Wolf really taking his time on the mound. will step off and now look in as Rainier is still standing up waiting for the sign. He'll peer into the dugout to get the sign from one of the coaches and now relay it to Wolf with a man on second base. The signs change, of course. Wolf peering in, now comes set below the waist. Checks the runner, throws, fastball swung on, fouled back to the screen right above us. And ooh, that one gets through the netting, the area of the netting where the netting reaches the rooftop here and it separates and it literally fell into a gentleman's lap sitting below the net. Right into his lap. Luckily, he didn't hit him in the danger zone. Seems to be all right. <laughs> Wearing the Boston Red Sox cap there, just chewing on some peanuts. That's a tailor-made foul ball or a souvenir. One-two pitch. Wolf steps off the mound, and it's we'll do it all over again. One and two, a man on second base. Six to one, Wolverines lead. The pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. He struck him out. So Wolf, his first strikeout. And there are two away in the fifth inning. Nick Adams joining me in the booth. Unfortunately, Nick, we have our, all our microphones hooked up to the camera and and something. I'm not sure what else we're hooked up to right now. But, uh, oh, it's to our, yeah, our, our commercials, running our commercials. So Nick doesn't have a microphone, but he looks good. You look good. Nick, where did you... Nick has the jacket, the official jacket that the Wolverines wear. Where did you get that jacket? I want one bad. 
Those things, that's a good looking jacket. Fastball misses up high to Nick Miller. Miller, the tall left handed hitter, 1 0 to him. I was going to talk to Eric about order. I was, I was going to tell him, I will pay for the j- jacket. Those, I, I love the look. It's a green jacket with the gray collar that goes up and then a zipper down the front and then the UV emblem on the left breast there. 1 0 pitch, check swing. He went around, says home plate umpire Kendall Snyder. A fastball that caught the outside corner there from Patrick Wolf. And Miller couldn't decide whether he wanted to go after it or not. The count even at one and one. The leadoff hitter, Ryan Yamane, still at second base. Two outs in the inning, six to one, Wolverines. Wolf checks the runner. The lefty throws. Fastball swung on and hit in the air to left. Coming in, now misplaying it, going back is Moish, now making the grab just in front of the warning track, and the inning's over. So Patrick Wolf allows a first allows the first batter to reach on a single, and then Jordy Hart made an error, letting him go to second base, but that is where UNC strands it. So a hit and a one and a runner left, no runs for UNC. We head to the bottom of the fifth in, fifth inning. Service security provider, Protection One. Protection One serves over one million residential and business customers all across the country. Protection One has a 95.6% customer satisfaction score and an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. And if you're looking to make a great career move, Protection One is hiring now. Visit careers at protectionone.com for details or drop by our career center just off the University Avenue exit of Interstate 15 and head for 1290 Sand Hill Road in Orem or visit you don't know P1.com. Bottom of the fifth inning here in Orem as we begin the Wolverines turn it back. Now batting number 13, It'll be Sean Boyce, the left, hitting from the left side, switch hitter. The starter. Chris Hammer still out there on the mound for the Bears. He gave up five runs in the first and a run in the second. The pitch swung on, and this one hit high down the left field line. Foul territory giving chase as the left fielder Tanner Hill watch it head out of play. And beyond the fence, it would have been a home run had it stayed fair, but well foul over the, the Western Athletic Conference banners that adorn the chain link fence, the top of the chain link fence above the padded green wall down the left field line. No balls, one strike to Moish. Moish has had a heck of a day. One, two for two with two RBIs. Oh, one pitch to him. A change up and it's 0-2 that catches the outside corner. That was clocked at 55. I have a hard time believing it was it was slow. I don't know if it was that slow. From the windup, 0-2 pitch. Fastball high and away at 88. If that was 55 and then he came with 88, that would be something to that would be something to see. I don't even know physically. I don't know how you would even catch up to a fastball. One two pitch, swung on and hit well into right center field. Coming in though is the center fielder making the grab below the waist. A little basket catch off to his the left of his body. Jensen Park retires Moish. Moish though hitting the ball well right now. He is retired for the first out of the inning, and here comes Kruger. Kruger picked up an RBI back in the first inning on a fielder's choice. He then grounded into a double play in the second. The pitch to him. Breaking ball on the outside corner, strike one. Kruger, the tall left-handed hitter out of Jordan High School. Open, slightly open stance, bent at the knees. No batting gloves for Mark. One strike pitch is swung on and hit high in the ballpark to left field. Going over onto the track now is the left fielder. He looks up and it's it's gone. No, a, it is a home run. The left fielder Tanner signaled as if it was a were a ground rule double. I don't know how that would be possible out there, but the third base umpire Mike Whitty was right on it, and he signaled, waving that one finger around in the air, a home run. For Mark Kruger, a solo shot. That ball was not hit hard, it seemed, off the bat. It just kept carrying to left. And now, as I look out toward the flag that is, like, blocks away from us near a superstore down there, line drive, base hit for Riley White into right field. I don't even have time to explain what's happening here. 
So White in there with a base hit. One out for the Wolverines. They lead 7-1. to one. Kruger's ball, it didn't seem to be hit all that hard, but it kept carrying. And it just got over that chain link added on fence above the 10-foot wall in, in left field to the, maybe 20 feet to the right of the foul line. Short porch down there, 305 down the line for a home run for Kruger. So Kruger goes the other way. Wow, that, uh, that one was peculiar. Throw over to first, white back and diving as Brinkerhoff steps in there. So the Wolverines, who have not hit a lot of home runs this year, have hit two in this ballgame. That one may have been aided by the wind, as I mentioned the wind as a ball is grounded foul down the third base line. We see a giant American flag that is maybe two or three blocks away from us to the south, and if you're looking towards right center field, it is blowing to the east, so that would be towards the left field. So maybe the, with the wind, I think, aided that ball off of, Brink, off of Kruger's bat, but that ball would just got out of here. Strike called at the knees, 0-2 now to Brinkerhoff. So Kruger is second RBI of the ball game. Let's catch a little break there. Wide in scoring position with one out. It's a big 90 feet. It breaks up the double play. One ball, two strikes to Brinkerhoff. The pitch, check swing, foul right around home plate area. Count remains at one and two. Well, I'm disappointed on that Kruger home run in the sense that I wasn't even able to make a, a fun home run call. I was calling as if it were going to be a fly out. I'm going to have to talk to Mark after the game and just explain to him that's unacceptable that's that's uh if you're gonna hit it hit it i want to see i want to hear one that's high that's deep it's gone not that one's hit in the ballpark coming over is the left fielder and uh, did it go over the fence i guess it did a home run that one swung on a little blooper into the left field going out as the shortstop backhanding it is yamane and there are two away in the inning white staying put at second as brinkerhoff is retired So here's Grayson Bogdan, who showed us some power back in the first inning as he hit a three-run shot, part of that five-run first for the Wolverines. Seven runs for the Wolverines on six hits, one run on four hits for the Bears. The Wolverines have an error in the field. Righty on righty matchup, pitch. Fastball up around the head of Bogdan, but over the plate, and it's 1-0 and to him. Bogdan hitting 252 this season. White with a good sized lead at second. Base hit should score him. Every play playing about middle deep for the Bears in the outfield, playing very deep as a liner off the left arm of Hammer. He picks it up, throws to first. He looks to be all right. Uh, just a scorching line drive that hit. It looked like Hammer's left arm below his glove, but he picked up the baseball and threw it to first for the putout. So the Wolverines get a home run, a run on that solo shot, and a base hit. They leave a runner stranded, however. They lead it 7-1 to one as we head to the top of the sixth inning here in Orem. You're listening to UVU Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Jordan Bianucci back here with you on WolverineGreen.com. Mid-afternoon baseball here in Orem. Game one of a doubleheader. Now back, number on, one, a, on a uh, pleasant Friday afternoon. I should ask Ryan, you were down on the field. Was it, how was the weather? How was it down there?
Ryan says uh, it got a little cool down there, but with the jacket on, he's all right as the pitch is called for a strike, going one. Patrick Wolf back out there on the mound for the Wolverines in relief of Danny Bettis. Fastball right there to the right-handed hitting Brandon Vaughn and Owen Tudor Vaughn. I did that on purpose. That's on purpose. I said Ryan because actually it wasn't Tyler Sturdivant came up to me before the ball game as Wolf stares in and said, hey, how many times are you going to call Nick Ryan today? And I said, I'm going to at least call him in once. And so as the ball misses away, it's one and two. I was going to see if I could get that patch. I almost got it past you. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I was going to say I had to work it in at some point, just but I knew it had to, it had to be casual, real casual. See if I could get it by you. Ryan Pickens, of course, not with us today. I don't, where is Pickens? He didn't even call me. I was just told that he couldn't. He had a prior engagement. Pickens is on assignment, I assume. Pop up right side giving chase is Riley White. He'll make the one-handed grab right in front of the Northern Colorado dugout. And there's one away in the sixth. So Patrick Wolf doing a nice job here in relief. Here's Brian Tibbetts to hit. It's become a tradition. If I don't say it, it's really kind of just a superstition at this point. I have to mess up anybody, broadcaster, anyone who's in this booth, I have to mess up their name at this point. Wolf, lefty on lefty matchup. Tibbetts open stance. Pitch to him. He shows bunt down the third base line, a chopper that's foul. Yeah, I don't want you to be insulted, Nick, because we are roommates on the road on the road. It's not as if I don't know you. <laughs> no balls, one strike. The count to Timmons. The wind starting to pick up now, blowing from left to right. The pitch. That one swung on a liner through the legs of Patrick Wolf. Fielded by Zollinger is short. He throws him out. Patrick Wolf turned around. Uh, his momentum carried him all the way, so his back was toward the plate. The ground ball went through his legs with his face, with his body facing towards the outfield. And Zollinger was still able to pick up the grounder and throw out Tibbetts. So an entertaining out, at the least. And here is Nick Tanner. Tanner, 0 for 1, popped up and walked. Left-handed hitter, Wolf, from the stretch, bases empty. He throws, fastball, high and away, and it's 1 and 0. We mentioned the Northern Colorado Bears in the cellar of the WAC. They've only won one conference game. That was the, the last weekend against... Grand Canyon in Greeley, Colorado. Ball misses down low, another fastball. It's 2-0 now to Tanner. Tanner, the eight-place hitter, waiting on deck is Corey Fujimoto. Two-0 -oh pitch. There's a breaking ball in their first strike, and it's 2-1 and one now to Tanner. Nick Tanner, the freshman, 6'1", 175 pounds, out of Foothill Ranch, California. Went to Trabuca High School. That one swung on and hit well into left center field, though. Coming over and playing it nicely is Sean Moish. That ball really hung up for him in middle deep center field, though it was hit well off the bat. And a 1-2-3 inning for Patrick Wolf and the Wolverines. We head to the bottom of the six. The Wolverines leading 7-1. Therapy. Win, lose, or draw. Regardless of the game's outcome, you are guaranteed a win at Tacanos. All that mouth-watering, marinated, and grilled to perfection Brazilian goodness. More than 15 meats and vegetables served hot off a skewer at your table. Your taste buds are gonna samba. Let the dance begin. Visit Tacanos at Provo. Be sure to mention this ad and receive a free Brazilian lemonade. Call 801-224-4774 for reservations today. Elise, come on, it's game day. You've got all weekend to study. Jen, this has nothing to do with studying. I've got to work. The way the economy is, I figure I'll be working for the next century just to pay off these student loans. Well, you know... I know, I know. You joined the National Guard, so your college is completely paid for. Yes, you've mentioned it a couple thousand times. The National Guard scholarship covers up to 100% of your tuition. Learn more at nationalguard.com. 
Back here on WolverineGreen.com as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. New pitcher on for Northern Colorado. Chris Hammer is done after five innings of work after he gave up seven runs on six hits. The new pitcher is number 21, Dan Talley, and the sidewinder, Dan Talley, a right-hander. Talley? Will, well, Talley, we don't know what he will come with. Looking at the uh, scouting report, it's blank. So, Talley's a bit of a surprise. We'll see. Let's, let's, let's see what Talley does. He break on it on the inside corner, and it's 2-1 and one to Seth. I say Seth, Slesk. When I'm able to speak properly, I'll let you know. That one swung on and hit into center field. Shit. Moving over to his r- right and into left center field is Jensen Park. He puts away Slesk, and there's one away here in the seventh. Six. Wrong side of the scoreboard. So here's Cam Zollinger with a man gone. Zollinger, 0 for 1 with a walk. The pitch to him. Wow, strike called. That was up above the belt, and it's 0 and 1. We haven't seen that strike called from Kendall Snyder, who's been pretty inconsistent behind home plate. Working quickly as Tally. Ball misses down and in. It's 1 and 1. That strike call up above the belt. In the rule book, it is a strike. There's, in fact, some would argue that it should be called a strike more often to especially in the big leagues, to move games along. Here's a pop-up in the infield. The second baseman's going to call for it. Mosley, near the infield grass, makes the catch, and they're quickly two away for the Wolverines. That strike above the belt, though, is rarely called, especially in Major League Baseball, but it was called there, and it reminds you of the pitch that was called against Art Kruger back in Sacramento State to get him, strike him out looking, which it wasn't belt, that wasn't above the belt. That pitch was neck high. It was just a poor call, and Mark Kruger was kind of cheated out of an at-bat there. But here's Jordy Hart, who has been hitting the ball well. Takes a strike. Hart, a double down the line in the second inning. A ball down low. It's one and one to him. Nobody on, two outs. Seven to one. The Wolverines leading Northern Colorado. Fastball misses high and away at 74. Dan Talley, the slender right hander, he comes set at the uh, waist and then just drops down completely sidearm, like submarine almost. And that one he throws to the backstop way outside, and it's three and one. Although the way he throws, you have to figure he can go a long time. Three balls, one strike, the count to Hart. You should see a good pitch to hit. It's inside, ball four. Jordy Hart right now taking very good at bats. So here comes Seth Reinier, who's been hit by two pitches today and popped up. If Reinier gets hit here, at least it will be, it won't hurt him, it'll He's 73 miles an hour. That's not to say I would want to be hit by a 73-mile-an-hour baseball, but I'm in the booth, so I'm not used to it. Right here, he's a lot tougher than I am, the catcher. Throw over to first base. Yeah, it's a shocker there. Right here is tougher than me. Back at diving is Hart. Man on, two outs, 7-1 to one Wolverines. Bottom of the sixth. That one swung on and line foul. Under the berm down the left field line. And it's 0 and 1. That ball will just stay in the corner down there in left field. Nick, that's your assignment. Any foul balls? I want as many foul balls as I can get today as a, as a young man. Runs over there to grab it. This one popped up. Foul territory down the left field line, giving Chase as the first baseman. He'll make the grab after losing his cap. It's Nick Miller making the play. And the inning is over. So the Wolverines get a base runner. However, they leave him stranded. We head to the top of the seventh inning. Moving along here in Orem. 
Seven to one, the Wolverines lead it. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Elise, come on, it's game day. You've got all weekend to study. Jen, this has nothing to do with studying. I've got to work. The way the economy is, I figure I'll be working for the next century just to pay off these student loans. Well, you know... I know, I know. You joined the National Guard, so your college is completely paid for. Yes, you've mentioned it a couple thousand times. The National Guard scholarship covers up to 100% of your tuition. Learn more at nationalguard.com. You're my storyteller. You're my bucking bronco. You're my protector from closet monsters. You're my shoe tire. You're my macaroni and cheese maker. You're my Saturday morning cartoon buddy. You're my alley fixer. You're my catcher, pitcher, fielder, and coach. But if you get hurt at work, all that can change. So please be careful out there. Be careful out there. Please be careful. A message from Workers' Compensation Fund. Jordan Bianucci back you, back here with you on WolverineGreen.com as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Game one of a doubleheader here between UVU and Northern Colorado. Patrick Wolf back in in relief for the Wolverines. The left-hander, the lead Danny Bettis, back in the fifth inning. Wolf manicuring that pitcher's mound with his with the spikes of his right cleat. He will face Corey Fujimatu to begin the seventh and then back to the start the start of the lineup for the Bears. That one fouled away right side, 0-1. Fujimatu walked with the bases loaded, thus picking up an RBI back in the fourth inning. Other than that, he has not done a whole lot. He hit a slow ground ball to third base with the bases loaded in the second. Celeste made a diving play on it and threw him out, or rather threw to second for the fielder's choice to end the inning. A nice play by Celeste. Here's a fastball that somehow got by the right near the catcher. It's a ball missing, one and one. Wolf comes set below the waist as the wind picks up now. The pitch. Down and in, a breaking ball missing, and it's two and one. You can hear that wind in our crowd mic that sits out the window in the booth next to us. Ball misses inside, and now it's three and one to Corey Fujimoto. Fujimoto hitting 200 even. 3 1 pitch. Fastball strike one. Or rather, strike two, I beg your pardon. And the count is full. That ball, a generous call from Kendall Snyder. That looked to be a little bit off the plate. Lefty on righty matchup here. Payoff pitch coming from Wolf. Now time is taken by, the, I believe it was Fujimoto, and that won't make. Patrick Wolf happy. No pitcher likes that when they're into their stretch. And time is called. Full count. Base is empty. The pitch. Fastball swung up, popped up, out of play, onto the rooftop. And we'll do it all over again. Fujimoto, the senior out of Tucson, Arizona. Six foot, 220 pounds, bent at the knees from the right side, waving that bat above his head. The lefty wolf throws. Fastball swung on and hit in the air, high in the air. It's in foul territory for Riley White near first base. He makes the grab right near the first base coach's box, and there's one away in the seventh. So a lot of pop-ups today and a lot of pop-ups in foul territory off to the right side. I don't have a stat to to uh, complement that observation, but just an observation. Here is the top of the order for the Bears. Mosley up there, the right-handed hitter, takes a ball that was just low, and it's one ball. The count is Mosley steps out and spits on his palms. He has wearing the batting gloves, rubs them together 
big poppy style, David Ortiz of the Red Sox. Red Sox just doesn't. He forgot to give it the big clap right there afterward. 1-0 pitch, fastball, strike one. So right now, Kendall Snyder giving that outside portion of the plate, and it's one and one. Defense straight away, the outfield, center field and right field, Hart and Mo and Brinkerhoff playing very shallow, playing about middle deep and left is Moish. Infield straight away, that pitch, fastball misses inside, turning away from it was Mosley, and the count is two and one. Wolf is ready to go on the mound, but stepping out of the box and taking a second was Mosley. Now he's ready. 2-1 pitch. Fastball. Missed down low. That was about the same spot that those pitches were called for strikes. That one just below the knees, though. 3-1. and one. A man getting warm in the pen for UNC. It's a lefty. Three one pitch coming from Wolf, and it misses down and away. He walked him, so a one out walk issued to Landon Mosley, and another base runner for the Bears. And now here comes Dave Carter to have a word with Patrick Wolf. Nobody getting warm in the UVU pen, so they're going to stick with Wolf here. Carter will just. Go over perhaps a scouting report and remind Wolf that really with a six run lead, all you got to do is throw strikes here. Seven to one, the Wolverines lead. We're in the top of the seventh inning. On the out of town scoreboard, there is one game being played right now, and it is Seattle up in North Dakota. North Dakota leading that ball game five to four. It's in the top of the ninth inning. So last chance for Seattle up there in Grand Forks. Everything else will begin later this evening. Throw over to first base, back in standing is Mosley. Ryan Yamane. At the plate, the left-handed hitting shortstop waits. The pitch to him. Fastball high and away. One ball to the shortstop. Playing off the bag at third, about even with it, though, is Slesk. Holding Mosley on at first. Short lead for Mosley. Riley wide over there. Now the outfield all shallow. Ball in the dirt. A nice stop by Rainier. Sliding to his left and keeping it in front of him. They count two balls, no strikes. Jason... Jensen Park would hit, or will hit. There's only one out in the inning. Unless Wolf can get Yamane, Yamane, excuse me, to ground and do a double play. There's a fastball that missed just below the knees, and now it's 3-0. and oh. So now heading out to the pen for the Wolverines is Kyle Valgardson. He'll start to get loose, the right-hander, as Wolf is struggling with his command here in his third inning of work. The pitch, fastball way outside, not even close. So runners on first and second now for Jensen Park, and Valgardson will try to get warm even faster. So now you're into the heart of the lineup for Northern Colorado, and if you're Northern Colorado, the seventh inning, this is a big time moment in the ball game. Here's your shot. Only one out in the inning. You have your three place hitter, Jensen Park up there with two men on. Wolf throws. Fastball down and in, 1-0. Patrick having a really hard time finding the strike zone right now. Walks off the mound, the back of the mound. Now we'll put that left foot against the rubber. Throwing from the far left side of the pitcher's plate. Coming set, 1-0. Fastball called for a strike. Just catches the inside corner at 84, and it's 1-1. One one. Park hitting 269 this season. 276 with runners in scoring position. Yamane at first, Mosley at second. This one popped up in the infield. The infield fly will be ruled. Bogdan catches it anyway, and there are two away. 
So with runners on first and second and less than two outs, the first base umpire, Barry Larson, right on top of it, called the infield fly right away. Bogdan, of course, can doesn't have to catch the ball. It's an out as soon as they call the infield fly rule. However, if he does not catch it or if he does catch it, the runners advance and can advance at their own risk. So wisely, Bogdan catches the baseball. That situation happened yesterday in Pittsburgh. Brandon Phillips, the Reds' second baseman, they called the infield fly rule. He caught it behind his head, kind of just lifted his glove hand behind the back of his head and caught the ball with runners on base, of course. That one swung on and fouled off to the right side, 0-1 to Ben Netzel with two outs and two men on. And watching that, the, the announcers commented that that's a nifty play there, but should he drop that, the runners can take off. 0-1 pitch coming in Netzel. The Bears have squandered opportunities like this all day. Ground ball foul down the left field line, just about a foot foul. Bears have left five men on base through six and two-thirds of an inning. They have two men on here with two outs. Netzel, the right-handed hitter. Wolf checks the runners. He throws. Fastball high and away, and it's one and two. One ball, two strikes. Wolf comes set, below the waist. The lefty delivers. Fastball swung on, popped up. Shallow right field coming in is Brinkerhoff. He'll make the grab, one-handed, and the inning is over. So the Bears leave two more on the base paths, and the Wolverines get out of another jam. No hits, two left, no runs for the Bears. We head to the bottom half of the seventh. First, we'll stretch here in Orem as... We prepare to Ladies sing and Take Me Out to the Ball game. And, and heck, we'll keep it here for that here on WolverineGreen.com. First pitch swung on and fouled out of play down the left field line by Sean Boish as we begin the bottom of the seventh inning. Seven to one, the Wolverines on top. Back out on the mound in relief is the sidewinder Dan Talley. Nobody getting warm in the pen for the Bears. Fastball misses down and in to the left-handed hitting Sean Boish. It's one and one. Look at left field. I'm speaking to Ryan still in the booth. Dick Tanner in left field is playing on the warning track. That pitch swung on, popped down the left field line. No one is going to get to it as it gets out of play beyond the whack banners to the left of the left field foul pole. And it's one and two to Moish. Tanner... In everyone playing deep, the right fielder playing a few steps in front of the warning track. That's Ben Netzel. One ball, two strikes the count to Moish. Playing with his heels on the track, literally in left field, is Nick Tanner as Moish takes the ball down and away. It's two and two. I've, we've seen teams play deep, especially when 
this Tuesday when Utah was in town, the wind was blowing out. Ground ball foul on the first base side. Count remains two and two. But I've never seen a man play with his heels on the dirt of the warning track. That is, especially against a left-handed hitter. That is, that is, well, that's something. 2-2 two, two pitch. Fastball away. And it's 3-2. and two. Dan Talley, just a soft-throwing submarine pitcher. That, he hasn't really hit the 80s yet. There's a fastball that misses down and away, and Boish is in there with the leadoff walk. So the Wolverines looking to add on here in the seventh. They lead 7-1. to one. Should they score four runs and lead 11-1, to one, the game would be over. The 10-run rule would come into effect. Here's Mark Kruger, who hit a home run in his last at bat. He hit one that looked like it was going to be just a fly out to deep left field, but the ball kept carrying as the wind was blowing out that way, and it got over the wall. A solo shot for Kruger, the pitch. Fastball away, 1-0. Waiting on deck is Riley White. Moish with his lead at first, being held on by Nick Miller. The pitch. Strike called on the outside corner, and it's 1-1. One and one. Dan Talley went to Dodge City Community College before transferring to Northern Colorado. 1-1 one, one pitch, that one swung on, ground ball to the second baseman, this could be two. He spins, throws to short, on to first, double play, and what a double play it was. Landon Mosley at second base, fielded that to his, to his left, to the right side, spun around, a little sidearm throw to second base, and then a nice relay from Yamane on to first. A superb defensive play from Mosley, that was beautiful defensively from the Bears. He looked a little that's Robinson Cano-like right there. So two outs, base is empty. Riley White chops one right side, first baseman charging. He has it. We'll flip over to the pitcher covering, and the inning is over. So the Wolverines get a leadoff runner on, but double play and a ground out, and it's all over very quickly. We head to the eighth inning. The Wolverines leading 7-1. to one. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. At Witch Witch, customization rules. Grab a bag, our signature red Sharpie, and customize your witch, any witch, the way you want it. Choose from more than 50 superior sandwiches, all custom crafted with the freshest meats, cheese, and more than 60 toppings. Visit us online at www.witchwitch.com. That's www.whichwich.com. Hey Wolverine fans, this is UVU President Matthew Holland and I would like to personally invite you to join the Wolverine Club. The Wolverine Club coordinates social activities, pays tribute to student athletes and honors alumni and friends who provide support to the athletic program. Donated contributions provide academic and athletic opportunities for over 300 Utah Valley University student athletes annually. There are many benefits for Wolverine Club members including courtside seating, club luncheons, dinners and much, much more. Be a Wolverine, support scholarships and join the Wolverine Club. Spot 3652. Now that you've met. Back here on WolverineGreen.com, Jordan Bianucci with you, bringing you Utah Valley Baseball on the World Wide Web, wherever you may be listening. We appreciate it. That includes you, Mom. Thanks for listening. Wolf from the stretch. Nobody on. We'll begin the eighth inning. He faces Nick Miller here. Swung on, fouled back to the screen. The left-handed hitter took a mighty cut. But just a strike, 0-1. 7-1, to the Wolverines in control here. It'll be Nick Miller, Brandon Vaughn, and Ryan Tibbetts, 5-6-7 for the Bears. Wolf hiding that ball behind his back. Now comes set below the waist. The lefty throws. Slider misses down. And it's one and one. Remember, fans, when you come out to the ball game, don't forget to purchase an ice cold Pepsi. Utah Valley Baseball. 
is, I should say, as a fall, as I screw up that at, as a foul ball is looped down the left field line. It's one and two. Let's start over. Here we go. Don't forget, UVU fans, when you come out to the ball game to grab an ice cold Pepsi, the official soft drink of your Utah Valley Wolverines. One ball, two strikes to Miller. Swung on and hit high, shallow left field. No, now it's going to carry to deep left field. Getting under it and making the grab is Sean Boish. I thought it was shallow left field just because Slesk pointed up at third base as if it was in the infield and he or Zollinger were going to make the play. But no, a pretty well hit ball, but in the ballpark. One away. Nick Miller is two for four now. Stepping in is Brandon Bond. One out, nobody on. Seven to one, Wolverines. Top of the eighth. The pitch. Fastball, strike one, right there on the outside corner. Brandon Vaughn, the six foot, 190 pound junior out of. Louisville, Colorado, Trinidad State. That's the last school he transferred from. Fastball up and in. It's one and one. I assume that's how you pronounce it. The city in Kentucky is pronounced Louisville. I don't know. Maybe Colorado. Maybe Louisville. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Though at this point, down seven to one, Bears fans may let that one slide. They have more concerns on the field today. 1-1 pitch. That one swung on and fouled back to the screen, and it's 1-2. The Bears have had many chances today. They've played from, at least offensively, they have not been dominated by any means. They've had base runners on. They've just left most of them stranded. They have four hits, only one run, but they've reached base walks and they've not been paralyzed at the play by any means timely hitting however has been a different story that just hasn't happened for for unc one and two misses down and in gets by right near and it's two and two nobody warm in the pen right now for uvu we saw balgartson start to get loose but he's sat down since as Rainier heads out to the mound to have a quick word with Wolf. A righty in the pen for Northern Colorado. Getting warm. It's Kevin Willem. Willman, I beg your pardon. Kevin Willman getting warm in the pen for UNC. Bases empty, one out. Top of the eighth. Seven to one. Wolverines leading here. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and... Popped foul. That's going to get out of play, though, onto the on top of the Bears dugout on the first base side. It'll take a high bounce into the seats, and the count is even at two and two. Don't forget, fans. Our next broadcast will be today, just after this ball game, scheduled to start 6 p.m. Of course, it depends when this one ends. Should this one go any longer than? Then 5.30, the start time of the second game may be moved up a little bit. 2-2 pitch coming from Wolf. Fastball swung on, popped up. This one behind the catcher giving chases right near. Back to the screen, still looking up. He dropped it. He had it in his glove right in front of us, and it just he just couldn't hang on. So Brandon Vaughn stays alive. That's a tough play for for Rainier, playing right up against that screen. Very little foul territory behind home plate here at Brent Brown Ballpark. Rainier did a nice job to jump out of the crouch and find the baseball. Tried to one hand make the grab with the pitcher's, or rather the catcher's mitt, but he glanced off it. He couldn't hold on to it. 2 2 the count. One out, nobody on in the eighth. Right field. Brinkroff playing unbelievably shallow. The pitch swung on, line drive, one hopped by Sless. Backhanded, thrown to first, dug out by Riley White. 
What a play. Slask at third base. It was a very hard hit ball. One hopped him. He backhanded it out of the dirt like it was routine. Threw to first base, though. That was in the dirt. And Riley White dug it out like it was routine. So a heck of a play to field the ball. And then a heck of a play to dig it out by White at first. Some nice defense there from your Wolverine corner infielders. Now the left-handed hitting. Ryan Tibbetts, wide open stance, pitch to him, swung on, line drive into right field, but playing shallow and making the shoe top grass. No! He fielded it on a one hop, says the first base umpire, Barry Larson. Brinkerhoff from up here seemed to make the grab, shoe top style, but it one hopped into it, says Larson, and there's a single. Brinkerhoff was playing so shallow that it wasn't inconceivable that he could have made that play. That ball was a looping liner that would have easily fallen in for a base hit had Brinkerhoff been playing at a normal depth. But Brinkerhoff was playing in shallow, shallow right field. I mean, maybe 40 feet behind, 50, 40, 50 feet behind Bogdan. But maybe that. Now Brinkerhoff back in shallow with a man on first base with two outs here for Nick Tanner. Wolf throws, fastball, down and in. I say fastball, slider missed, one and oh. So that one, Bringerhoff, looked like he didn't get a great read off the bat. He hesitated, then came in a few steps to try and make the grab, just couldn't quite do it. 1-0 pitch, swung on, fouled back to the screen, it's one and one. Brinkerhoff, though, wisely, as we see many players make mistakes on those balls, trying to dive to make the incredible catch. Brinkerhoff played the ball in front of him while still trying to catch it out of the air, making out of the air, making sure it didn't get past him for extra bases. Wolf throws. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Up in the zone. And it's one and two. Tibbetts had a wide lead there at first base and dove back in as Seth Reinier bluffed a snap throw down to first. Short lead at first, held on by White. Everybody else straight away for the Wolverines. One ball, two strikes, two outs, a man on in the eighth. The pitch. This is down low, and it's two and two. Nick Tanner today, 0 for 2. He walked back in the fourth inning. Patrick Wolf will try and end the eighth, top half of the eighth, that is, right here. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. No, he foul tipped it, and it got a piece of the home plate umpire, Kendall Snyder. And he'll walk around a second and walk that one off, and right near is his baseball etiquette. will walk out towards the mound and toss Patty the baseball and now come back and chat with Kendall Snyder, give him a couple – him as long as he can to just get his breath back. Not sure where it hit him, maybe the chest or the left arm there, but count two and two. See if the runner takes off here. He does not. The pitch swung on and fouled. Up the screen on the first base side onto the rooftop. Nick Tanner battling right here in the late innings. His team, his team trailing by six runs. And look at that. Someone has raised the American flag in right center field at Brent Brown Ballpark. And it is. It is blowing from right to left right now. 2-2 pitch. Fastball up high, and the count is full. So it only took them seven and two-thirds innings, but they did it. The flag is up, and it is flying in the American breeze. Here at Brent Brown, what a day for baseball. Full count. Patrick Wolf throws. Fastball up and in. Oh, strike three called. And Kendall Snyder pulls one on Nick Tanner. That one looked to be a little up and in, and it may have well been. It was borderline, but the thing was Kendall Snyder waited to call it a strike until... Tanner was headed to first base, so Snyder a delayed call, but Wolf gets the strikeout. No runs on one hit, 
one left for the Bears. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning, 7-1. to The Wolverines lead it here. You're listening to Utah Valley Baseball on WolverineGreen.com. Want to marry? There's another woman I'd like you to know about, Alicia, our Shane Company bridal jewelry buyer. She works with our own designers, as well as premier engagement ring designers in the U.S. and around the world, creating hundreds of unique styles no other jeweler or website has. Our buyer adds fresh, innovative styles to our selection every week. They're so desirable that the small number of rings Alicia orders in each style sell out quickly. So, when you fall in love with an engagement ring at Chain Company, remember that it might not be there for long. When you see how different our styles are from all the other jewelers in town, you, you came to Shane Company. Now you have a friend in the diamond business, Shane Company, at the corner of State Street and 7200 South. Open weekdays till 8, Saturday till 5, close Sundays. Online at shaneco.com. Game man. Bottom of the eighth inning here in Orem. The Wolverines leading 7-1. to one. New pitcher on for Northern Colorado. It is Kevin Willman. Willman this season has a 12-2-3 earned run average. He's appeared in 13 ball games. Pitched 17 and two-thirds pitches. Two-thirds innings. Boy, when you do an entire game with a you lose a little sharpness towards the end. 17 and two-thirds innings pitched, 14 walks, nine strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 423 against him. So Willman has not seen a ton of action. So in a game that's seven to one, Northern Colorado will work him out here, get him some innings of work, or get him at least one inning of work. Here is Brinkerhoff. Hopefully, if you're a Wolverine fan, only one inning of work as they lead seven to one in the bottom of the eighth. Here's Brinkerhoff, the pitch. Fastball swung on, driven well to center field. Going back is Park. Park still going back, looking up, it's off the base of the wall. Brinkerhoff around second, is going to try for three. Here comes the throw. It's going to be cut off in the outfield with a stand-up triple. Craig Brinkerhoff's in there. And Brinkerhoff right now is swinging a hot bat. On Tuesday night, Brinkerhoff went two for five with three runs batted in. That one was absolutely crushed to the deepest part of the ballpark. It landed just to the right of the 427 marker in left center field. That's Death Valley out there. Brinkerhoff got a hold of that one, and that one was not aided by the wind. Here's the pitch to Bogdan, a breaking ball that catches the outside corner. It's 0-1. So a man at third base for the Wolverines with nobody out. The infield will come in for the Bears. Pitch to Bogdan. Swing and a miss. A bad swing. He chased a breaking ball low and away, and it's 0-2. Willman will come with a fastball in the mid-80s and a slider. Working from the stretch. Set, chest high, throws. Slider misses down and away to Bogdan, and it's 1-2. and two. Bogdan this afternoon hit a three-run home run back in the first inning, part of a five-run first that put the Wolverines ahead and they really haven't looked back. They lead 7-1 to one in the bottom of the eighth. The pitch swung on, popped up into shallow center field. We'll see if Brinkeroff tags. The catch is going to be made by Park. Brinkeroff does. Here comes the throw. On its way, he slides. Safe! Brinkerhoff slid perfectly away from the plate but tagged the plate with his left hand, swiping it. The throw was great by Jensen Park, right on line to the catcher, but Brinkerhoff just beat it. So, a nice job and a smart slide there from Craig Brinkerhoff. And another RBI on the day, the fourth one of the day for, for uh, Grayson Bogdan. Here's Zach Slesk, the pitch. He checks his swing at a breaking ball that's slowing away. It's 1-0, and and it's beginning to get very, very dark here in Orem. The lights are not on as it's overcast. Fastball up and in, and whoa, that one was only at 78, but if you're Zach Celeste, it could have been 95. Backed out of the way of that one. The wind now blowing in from right center field as the clouds have been up all day, but they really gather now, and it's very, very dark here at 5.20 in the evening. Ball misses up high, 3-0 and to Slesk. 
Celeste taking a strike in there, and it's three and one. Ups eight to one in the eighth, swinging at a 3-0 pitch. Maybe a maybe a sign of bad sportsmanship in college baseball as that ball is fouled back to the screen, and it's three and two as the wind starts to blow in from center into our booth, ruffling some papers. Three balls, two strikes to count to Slesk. Pitch swung on, fouled away, back and to our right. Slesk on the day, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. He'd like to get a base hit here going into game two of this doubleheader, which will start about a half hour after the conclusion of this game. Payoff pitch swung on, ground ball, softly hit, ranging to his left is the shortstop. Yamane spins, throws, he got him. Ryan Yamane. A sensational play, but a very close play at first base. Barry Larson says he was out. Cooper Fouts, I didn't see argue with the call, so he barely got him by maybe a half a step. Celeste hustling up the line, but really a pretty play by Yamane, ranging to his left behind the second base bag and spinning and throwing him out. Here's the pitch to Zollinger down in the dirt with the bases empty and two away. Want to know the count to him. Zollinger 0 for 2 with a walk back in the fourth. The Wolverines have only scored one run since the second inning. 1-0 pitch. That one a line drive foul down the down the third base line. And I apologize if they scored two runs since the second inning. One in the fourth and one in the eighth. The pitch, and it hit him. So Zollinger's hit by the pitch. And it's been that kind of day for Northern Colorado. So man on first with two out. Now the lights come on and begin to warm up here as the wind picks up blowing in from right center. Here's Jordy Hart. He hits that one deep to left. Going back is Tanner. Tanner at the wall now makes the grab. And the Bears have the wind to thank for that one because that ball was hit very well. The wind absolutely held that ball up on the track as a light rain begins to fall here in Aura. But that ball should have been out of here in under normal conditions as Tanner went back to the wall. He just stood there looking up, and then he changed his stance, squaring up to catch the ball, and you could see the wind just held it up. So the Wolverines get a run. They strand a runner on two, one hit, pardon me. Head to the top of the ninth. Patrick Wolf back out there. He'll try to close it out for the Wolverines. They lead it 8-1. to one. You're listening to WolverineGreen.com. You by Les Olson Company. The difference between success and failure can come down to game management. Partner with the pros at Les Olson Company to manage all of your document needs. Managing the flow of information is vital to the success of any business. Les Olson Company provides its partners with a full range of document management solutions backed by a veteran team of professionals. More than paper and ink, more than hardware and technology, this is a partnership. Visit us online at lesolson.com or any of our seven locations. Les Olson Company, your business empowered. UVU fans love their athletics. But did you know that they love to stay at La Quinta Inn and Suites across the street from UVU? Yes, that's right. With La Quinta's bright side breakfast, free wireless internet, workout room, heated indoor pool and spa, great rooms and friendly staff, what's not to love? Be a true UVU fan and stay at La Quinta Inn and Suites in Orem. Top of the ninth here at Brent Brown Ballpark. The Wolverines on top, 8-1. to one, Looking for a quick top of the ninth here so they can get ready for game two of this doubleheader. They lead 8-1. to one. Stepping up is Fuji Moto, and he takes a strike from Patrick Wolf. It's 0-1. Between innings, a light rain began to fall, and it seems to have ceased for the moment. But the dark clouds are out today. That one swung up, popped up very high in the infield. Zollinger at short, calling everyone off. We'll make the two-handed grab, and there's one away. 
a major league pop-up there off the bat of Fujimoto. So now one down, top of the order for Northern Colorado. It's Landon Mosley hitting from the right side. Wolf came into this ball game back in the fifth inning, and he has pitched very well. He's allowed some base runners but gotten out of jams. No runs given up. Trying to finish it off. First pitch to Mosley, down and away, and it's 1-0. and oh. So after this ball game, tune in about 6 o'clock will come on, and if that's the, I believe, 6 o'clock will come on here on WolverineGreen.com and have game two of this doubleheader. 1-0 pitch. Fastball, down low and away. It's 2-0. and oh. So no game tomorrow. Remember that, fans, if you're coming out of the ballpark. No game here tomorrow on a Saturday afternoon. The series will conclude on Sunday afternoon at noon. So game one here will end, and game two will, game two will start about a half hour after. Ball misses up high, and it's 3-0. and And with a seven-run lead, all Patrick Wolf needs to do is groove a fastball in there. And if you give up a shot, you give up a shot, but... You have an 8-2 to two lead if you give up that home run. 3-0 pitch. Fastball, right there, strike one. Mosley today, tough day. 0 for 2 with two walks, caught stealing. So not, not too tough, a couple of walks, but not a base hit. Slightly open stance from the right side. Mosley waiting, he takes, breaking ball, in there for a strike, and then the count is full. Waiting on deck is Ryan Yamane, the shortstop who made a spectacular, well, I don't know if I'd say spectacular, but a very, very good play at shortstop in the top of, or rather in the bottom of the eighth inning. 3-2 pitch, swung on, chopped to the first baseman. Riley Wright will take it himself, step on the bag, and there are two away. That was ball four. Landon Mosley went way out of the strike zone. That was high and away, maybe letter high or above. And the Wolverines catch a break, two away in the inning. So the Wolverines one out away here from taking game one. And getting another conference victory that proved so valuable. The batter is Yamane from the left side, the lefty on lefty matchup. Pitch, fastball. Strike one on the outside corner, and it's one strike to Yamane. Yamane has singled back in the fifth inning. is only hit today. 0-1 pitch. Swung on, lifted high but foul off to the left over the rooftop. And the count is quickly 0-2. So the Wolverines one strike away from getting this ball game. few more fans have filed in, although I think a few have left as well as the rain started to fall. So the ballpark practically empty at the moment. 0-2 pitch coming. Strike three, struck him out. Swing and a miss from Yamane, and the ball game is over. The Wolverines dominate in the first game of a doubleheader in this whack series against Northern Colorado. So the final score is eight to one. We will take a quick break here on WolverineGreen.com, have the final totals for you in a brief Wolverine Green postgame show coming up after these messages. Once again, the Wolverines win this one eight to one. Stick around for the Wolverine postgame coming up next. UVU fans love their athletics. But did you know that they love to stay at La Quinta Inn and Suites across the street from UVU? Yes, that's right. With La Quinta's bright side breakfast, free wireless internet, workout room, heated indoor pool and spa, great rooms and friendly staff, what's not to love? Be a true UVU fan and stay at La Quinta Inn and Suites in Orem. As an alum of UVU, there are many benefits, like the UVU Alumni Card, 
The card gives you access to the UVU Library and Activity Center. In addition, card holders can also get discount tickets to UVU sporting events and even 15% off UVU apparel at the bookstore. Other benefits include on-campus dining discounts or local restaurants, including Applebee's and Chili's, and discounts on UVU intramural registration fees and selected outdoor adventure center rentals. And the best part is the card is free. Apply for the UVU Alumni Card online at uvualumni.org. Hungry on campus? How can you make a difference to your UVU community? UVU Dining Services employs over 150 UVU students at our 11 locations around campus. We provide students with more than a job. By purchasing food at a Dining Services location, you are helping these students afford school, food, and housing. Dining Services provides a large variety of meal options on UVU's main campus. Their prices and quality compete with any local business. Dine in and help support your on-campus community. Visit our Facebook page at UVU Dining Services or an on-campus dining location to see for yourself. Dude, I finally checked out Wolverine Crossing, that huge property everybody's talking about. They have fully furnished rooms, come with huge flat screen TVs. They do roommate matching, monthly events, huge pools, and a gigantic 18-person hot tub. So you're telling me we found our housing for next year? Heck yes. Hashtag sweet. Hashtag sign me up. Call today to be part of the pack. 801-431-0000. Or visit WolverineCrossing.com. Wolverine Crossing is a proud sponsor of UVU Athletics. Wolverine Crossing. Student living redefined. Back here on WolverineGreen.com, it's your Wolverine Green, or rather Wolverine post-game show here as Utah Valley just wrapped up an 8-1 victory over Northern Colorado. The Wolverines didn't hit all that well, only seven, they had seven hits, eight runs, but they were helped out by a few home runs off the bat of Grayson Bogdan and... Mark Kruger, and yeah, just two home runs. I thought I was thinking there was three for some reason, but two home runs for the Wolverines as they lead as they win it eight to one. The winning pitcher is Patrick Wolf. He improves to one and one, and he was stellar in relief of Danny Bettis. The losing pitcher is is Chris Hammer. Hammer falls to two and eight on the season no save situation of course the game just a quick review the wolverines jumped up to a six nothing lead early they scored five in the first and one in the second they then northern colorado got one run back in the fourth and that's all they would get is the wolverines tacked on two more runs in the fifth and then the eighth and the final being eight to one Eight runs on seven hits, one error for Utah Valley. One run on five hits, no errors for Northern Colorado. So the Wolverines take game one, and it was an important game one in this WAC series as the team gets back on the field, ready to manicure it for game two, which will begin in just about a half hour. The time of the ball game was two hours and 27 minutes. The attendance they don't even have on the final stat sheet here, it was maybe around 50 people at the ballpark for game one here, which was scheduled last minute. So hopefully, come out to the ball game tonight, or right now, plenty of good seats available, and the rain should stay away long enough for us to play some ball, and if it doesn't, there's an overhang here at Wolverine, or at Brent Brown Ballpark, where you can sit and enjoy it, enjoy the game dry. So, for my broadcast partner, Ryan Pickens and James Warnick, I am Jordan Bianucci saying so long for just a moment from Brent Brown Ballpark. The Wolverines th win this one by a final of 8-1. to one. We'll be back with game two in just about 30 minutes.